Okay. We'll point her. Oh, oh I'm gonna, gonna target it. Okay, we'll call the regular council meeting of June 20th, 2023. It's right now 6. Oh, five. We'll call a meeting to order. Uh, we'll move a motion, please, to move into the closed session subject to uh, labor and legal and section 90.1, 90.1 E, F, G, and K. Do we have a motion to move into closed? So moved. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Carried. Okay, if you'll have your seats. Yeah. Please take your seats and we'll start the meeting. Okay, welcome back to the June 20th uh, council meeting. Uh, the time is 7.05. And I'll just start with uh, the, the First Nations address. And we're privileged to be meeting and doing work on behalf of the residents of Lions Bay on the traditional unceded territory of the Squamish and Musqueam nations. And with that, I'll call the meeting to order. Do we have a motion to call the meeting to order? Okay. Second. Yeah. All in favor? Yeah. Opposed? Carried. Okay, uh, first item is reporting out from the closed portion of the meeting. I have a number of items. This is about six or seven items, so bear with me. From previous meetings. From previous meetings. The last meeting of council went till 1240 in the morning, so there were a few items that uh, we'd like to report out. Just review again. Uh, first item uh, is that Deanna Campbell be appointed as the Lions Bay Corporate Officer on an interim basis. Uh, and that was unanimously approved. It was opposed by Councillor Reuter. Uh, item number two, be it resolved that Council hereby directs that for a period lasting through Council's summer recess and to be revisited thereafter, there be no inclusion within the village update from any member of the Council or other users, users of the village's communication system to residents by members of council unless approved in advance by council, and that any communication from staff within the village update or otherwise as above be confined to brief operational updates, and that the approving jurisdiction and authority for the village update and other electronic communications to residents shall reside with the sole discretion discretionary authority of the acting municipal coordinator in consultation with the contractor Campbell on an ad hoc basis as determined necessary by the acting municipal coordinator. Uh, this was opposed by Councillor Broughton and Mayor Barry. Uh, third item, be it resolved that the council hereby directs the authority of approving jurisdiction over agendas be within the sole purview of the acting municipal coordinator in consultation with contractor Campbell on an ad hoc basis as determined necessary by acting municipal coordinator. And that was abstained, uh, Councillor Broughton abstained. Item number four, citizen of the year and distinction award will be presented on July 1st, 2023. And that was unanimous. At the uh, beach park. At the beach park. Celebration. Uh, yes, beach park celebration. So can, I, can I add something to that? Probably a little bit out of order, but it just dawned on me. Um, the 30 Stewart Award will also be presented on that day. Okay. We, we probably should have added that to it. All right. That's going to be a uh, special day, Canada Day. Okay. Uh, also, that council approve the recommendation made by the Lions Bay Beach Park Revitalization Project to accept the proposal by Millennia Architecture Corp submitted on April 28, 2023 for architectural and structural consulting services as described in the architectural RFP issued on April 6, 2023. Item number six, Councillor Abbott will, or did resign. I'm sorry, there was, there was a vote. This, the vote uh, discussion was on that as well. Yeah, apologies. Um, uh, that was opposed by Councillor Reuter and Councillor Abbott. Item number six, Councillor Abbott resigned following the last meeting 
from the Lions Bay Beach Park Committee effective immediately after the meeting. Item number seven, with the guidance of the provincial advisor, the CAO replacement is progressing. Item number eight, Ron Miller's, uh, the CAO, Ron Miller's contract was not renewed on the expiration date as of May 30th, 2023. This was opposed by Councillor Broughton and Mayor Berry. And with that, uh, we'll move to the adoption of the agenda. Do we have a motion to adopt the agenda? Move forward. Second. Second. Okay. Discussion? Edits? Um, one second. I think I had one minor uh, question here. Um, yeah. So under B, Mayor, Mayor 5, appointing village council. So that lead council as in legal council with SEL. Um, and yeah, so that's that's my question. And if it is that case, is that not a closed meeting discussion? We can strike that. I think that's covered in, uh, as you say, closed. So strike that. Okay. Um, and then the one above that, um, additional temporary help. Um, that sounds like that's a important of. I think we covered that off and closed as well, or we will. We'll yep. strike that. Thank you. And we'll strike the rain barrels and storage pans. I think that was uh, a note, and I know that there was discussion on that previously. And number two, what's the fire smart initiative? Uh, number two, I'd just like to suggest that uh, we pass a motion to invite fire smart uh, representatives to come and speak to the village. And, and of course, we'll uh, do that in conjunction with our fire chief and uh, emergency response. So that was what that is about. If you're fine with that. Um, I have a suggestion on that, and we can discuss it at the time if you like. Okay. Do you have any materials that are going to accompany that? Or I just would like to make a motion to see whether the council is amenable to reaching out to yeah. Fire Smart. And okay. Yeah. Do and, you and want to discuss that now, or do we? No, no, we no. We'll do it again. And, and B3, what, what's the nature of that? 10B3? Uh, that is, a, is, I'd like to make a motion to. Uh, recommend that we follow the best practices of our provincial advisors uh, because we've, we've got this talented help here and uh, what we've seen, and, and again, we can discuss this later, but what, what I'm seeing is that we're not following the best practices of our provincial advisors. So I'd like okay. to pass so a motion on that. A discussion. Okay. We can discuss that in the open or in the I, I would say open. It's, it's the best practices. It's not, uh, it's not legal. It's not uh, employees. Um, could, could I add uh, dialogue? Good open. Yeah. yeah, under 10B, uh, the Alliance Bay Beach Advisory Committee, um, just a discussion of uh, follow up uh, information on a request for a decision previously and expansion of that. And, uh, so, and also um, briefly like to discuss the concepts of the Parking Committee and the Highway Noise Committee. Uh, which likely will then be referred into uh, closed uh, for some issues. Okay, so just adding uh, ND two and three, yeah. Uh, parking and highway noise? Highway noise, yeah. What was the first one, Michael? Uh, it's the, it's a request for decision. Uh, it's following up on the, the, refer the an explanation of the request uh, for de for a decision, uh, which will has been expanded to include the um, uh, playscape and the construction manager. Yeah, I I really feel that should be discussed in post. I mean, we can do some further reporting out of it, but that's um, yeah. There's okay. yeah. I mean. Based on what I said at the committee meeting that night, I think that's something we need to explore in the open. I'd like to explore those thoughts. Okay. I don't think it's, it'd be, I don't think okay. it's appropriate. Okay. For it's, an expansion, it's, it's an expansion of an existing request for development for, okay, fair enough. Okay. We'll keep that in close. Okay. Any other items? Oh, okay. Item 10D, 
for 10A3 out of three, uh, recycling information for the village update. For cycling? What is the? Just an information on the, on uh, recycling. Okay, we've got a very, very busy meeting. We've got lots of stuff, important stuff to get to in close. Is that take, something? This will take a very brief time. And it's quite quick. Okay, recycling information for village update. Okay, yeah. Okay, any other items? No? I would like to just make a brief statement prior to public participation and ask that it is included at the beginning of all open meetings, a reminder of etiquette, the public viewing etiquette, just written, taken off of our website. Okay. Okay, any other additions? No? Okay, uh, all in favor of adopting the agenda with the changes? Aye. Second. Thank okay. opposed, carried. Okay, uh, with that, we'll move to Councilor Conniff. Okay, to the public participation. So the just a reminder to all members of the gallery and those uh, joining us on Zoom, the public viewing etiquette, as per our website and policy, silent viewing only. Please do not interrupt council discussion. Public participation through Zoom will be made available during the public participation portion of the agenda. Please view the instructions here on the website if you need clarification. The chair will note the order at the beginning of the public participation, participation session, starting with those who are in attendance on Zoom. So we'll start with those on Zoom this evening. Mayor, limit background distractions by muting your microphone and keeping video turned off. If interruption is repeated, the participant will be removed from the meeting and that would go for both online and in gallery. And with that, whoever signed up, or we have two people on the on Zoom, I can see just two do we, Do you mind if we go with the gallery just because I, I wanna recognize that they're They've taken the time to out of their day. Absolutely. So if we're if we're okay, that this is just what's on the website, and it says that we would start with those who are in attendance on Zoom. But if everybody's in agreement, I'm absolutely fine with having those that are here in gallery go first. Councilors, would we? we yeah, that's the way we've been doing it for a while. So, so I just um, I can't see right. the list up there, but I'm sure the yeah, first person on the list knows who they are. So, uh, myself, and then followed by Mary Black. Could you please announce your name, please? Yes. Brenda Broden. Um, Mary Thank you. Mary and Council, good evening. Um, my request is for Council to not vote to remove the stop signs on the east side of the railway crossings at all three in, of the crossings in Lions Bay, and further, probably to leave the status quo and add some signs at the marina top and uh, one in Brunswick, but for pedestrian safety reasons. So the council councillors who served on the previous council know that I come on safe matters of safety. And it's something that, well, I sleep eight hours a night. Last night I didn't sleep thinking about the, um, the fact that we have had up to 50 years of no, car pedestrian interface with the kinds of uh, intervention that we have, which is a stop sign intervention at these locations. And this is not a time to experiment with that. When we look at people driving down the hill at 40 and then going into a 30 kilometers an hour, you cannot make that corner and you can't see uh, pedestrian traffic. As each of you may be aware, there is children all over um, at different times. There is adults of different ages on different um, using different walking instruments. The actual report did not include pedestrians, but traffic by the definition of the BC Motor Vehicle Act does include pedestrians animals, vehicles, cycles, other conveyances. 
And so we want to be sure that we don't change because BC Rail had sent, or uh, whichever rail company had sent us the information a year ago. Um, but we know that the municipality is the final authority on crop science. Um, so the municipality has the last word regarding the placement of stop signs. The speed of vehicles proceeding down the hill and not stopping will create harm. Each of these areas have pedestrians on the streets, including young children on trikes, following behind parents, people visiting walking dogs, entering and leaving the Lions Bay Beach Park and the Kelvin Grove Park, residents visiting at railroad tracks at Brunswick, as they pick up the North Shore news, I implore you to vote to support the safety of the citizens of Lions Bay and not remove the stop sign. The, the traffic report uh, is superficial without pedestrian consideration. I, I recommend actually that you just receive it and receive it with no action and perhaps discuss adding uh, the stop sign at Brunswick and adding a stop sign at Lions Bay Avenue. I recommend leaving all current stop signs in, at, in these locations and adding a stop sign at the top of the Marina Hill traveling north and adding a stop sign at the south end of the north arm of Brunswick Road, if it's deemed necessary. The best solution is to leave all current stop signs with these two additions and preserve our excellent safety record with no vehicle pedestrian interface to date. Thank you. Thank, Thank you very much. Okay. Um, next in the gallery, please. My name is Mary Lavaca. I have four questions for the mayor and council about the recently mailed property tax notices. There's a statement in a large blue line box on the property tax information sheet that was sent out with the notices. It states that the 2023 taxation has increased $262,000, driven by an average property value assessment increase of 8.1%. But this cannot be true. Property taxes are determined by taking the budget approved by council, dividing it amongst the residences based on the relative value of their homes. If my home is worth, say, 1% of the total value of all the homes in the village, I will pay 1% of the approved budgeted property taxes. So increase in property values only matter if someone's property value increases more relative to other properties in the village. Overall taxation has gone up $262,000 because the budget has increased. Essentially, council has decided to increase taxes in order to pay for more spending. Under your explanation of how the system works, if by some catastrophic economic collapse, the property values went down by 50%, would the property taxes go down by 50%? Of course not. The village needs a certain amount of taxation to function, and this year it is apparently $262,000 more than last year. My questions, which I would appreciate an answer to now, are, one, does the Mayor and Council understand how the municipal system works? Two, how was the incorrect statement on the information sheet not caught by the supposedly knowledgeable staff and the provincial co consultants hired to help them, including Mr. Deal? Three, do you plan on correcting this politically motivated misinformation in the next village update? And if not, why not? Four, why has the mayor supported increasing property taxes after campaigning to, and I quote, deliver a budget without tax increases? Your answers, please. So with all due respect, Mary, we may have made a decision that we're not going to be going in a back and forth with public participation. It's just the policy that we're adhering to. Um, if there's one particular councillor or mayor that might like to respond to you by email, um, but unfortunately, we just, we kind of have to. Oh, I, I've got, base. Sorry, I'm, go ahead now. I, I think we did, I didn't read my public text for Mary, but you're absolutely 100% correct. 
um, I had I read it, it would have jumped out at me. Um, I think we all know how the mole rate works, um, and that is inaccurate. So we actually we should be correcting that somehow. Maybe we need the council to decide how to go about that, um, and not debate it here necessarily. But you have to be correct. We should we should correct that. That's what it says. I know. You've just read it to me. Um, so yeah. I should read mine, probably text more often. Okay, maybe we should read it then. Can I just ask a clarification? So you're drawing our attention to the difference between the 223 and the 262. Is that right? No. No? I think no. No. no the point I, I, you made is actually dealing with the numbers at all. Yeah. I I compared the taxation between the two years and I didn't come up with 262,000. I came up with a less of an increase. But it wasn't really my point. It's mm -hmm. just to make a statement like that that goes out to the public, which is clearly incorrect, and makes it look like we're victims of our property tax values going up, is just wrong. I and mean, I think it needs to be corrected. Yes. Mm -hmm. The property taxes are determined by the budget, yes. which is determined by the council. That's what you're supposed to do. You can't hang it on the property tax or property values. It is irrelevant. Property tax increase is irrelevant. Sorry? The property tax increase is irrelevant to yeah. how yeah, to yeah. the tax rate. All right. Thank you very much for bringing that to our attention. We'll oh, definitely yeah. look into that. I think it about is an item that Bill Jeffy can certainly yeah. address. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Right. Okay. Uh, next from the gallery. Is there anyone on the list? No. Okay. Let's go to the Uh, good evening, Council. So I just wanted to express my gratitude to the four councillors and the mayor for their unit. Well, the four, uh, three at the time, councillors and the mayor for their unanimous decision to terminate Peter from his position. This action has had a positive effect and impact on the office, effectively removing a disruptive influence as the dominoes went down. The overall atmosphere has improved greatly with everyone displaying a more positive and friendly demeanor. So once again, um, I extend my thanks to the councillors for their unanimous vote in favor of Peter's dismissal. Now, regarding Peter's termination, there was a news publication, the North Shore News, that reported he received a payout of 133,000 and is now claiming additional compensation based on this alleged amendments to his contract. This situation can actually be likened to a golden parachute, even though he was rarely in the village. It is puzzling why the village has not issued a statement on this matter, and I direct this question to all four councillors and the mayor. If the allegation is indeed true, how did this situation arise? Considering that it was a unanimous vote on the matter, it seems that one of three possibilities is true. Councillor Abbott, the only councillor who served uh, during the portions that are claimed to have had the amendments, 2018 and 2021, had knowledge of the contract amendments but chose not to disclose them, resulting in harm to the village. Alternatively, former Mayor Ron carried out these actions without Randy, the if, Randy, Randy, if, just a minute. If we're going into uh, this uh, closed discussion. This is yep. like crossing a boundary. Could we just consult Mr. Okay. Um, on the carry, I, carry on with this? Let me just say. Um, it's to a closed door discussion. These are questions that I have with council. Um, Mr. Mayor, if I could, if I could help out. Yeah. I think we're embarking on contractual issues and labor issues that are currently uh, in camera matters and under uh, litigation. And it's, uh, I don't think it's appropriate to continue to hear this. I know that some members of public have uh, filed letters with council and we've put those into in camera until this matter is resolved and you can report out on it. I think it is important at some point that you do report out on it. Uh, but I don't think that it, this this uh, is an appropriate thing to be talking about in open at this time. Okay, um, just to the the gallery, it's it's unfortunate that that uh, council didn't report out a little bit earlier and the response to Mr. Dijon's filing. Uh, but I anticipate that uh, there will be a message to the public to keep uh, an open dialogue. So perhaps that'll answer some of the questions, but if, if you'll bear with us and allow us to uh, discuss this further and closed and, and uh, hopefully we can have a statement to the public. We'll, we'll certainly discuss it in closed if and what a statement would be at that time yeah. and then report out on it. Well, I think an open and transparent uh, a dialogue is, you know, we should be open and transparent and we should, uh, if if our council... Let's not decide what we're going to decide in closing the meeting. Let's go ahead. 
because we do the design. Yeah. Then I'll redirect to the second. Andy, is that fine? Uh, this I think we had a discussion on this that, that that there's a lot of rumors out there. Is there some way we can get something out to the public as quick as possible? Well, Mr. Mayor, I think this is dialogue needs to take place in camera as to what direction you're going to go in. And you shouldn't be making this decision in, in open at this particular time. There's litigation involved. I strongly advise you to stop this conversation, have it in camera, and then decide which direction you want to go in with your legal advisor giving you advice on it. Great. Thank you. Okay. Uh, we'll move to the next. Uh, I'd like first. to the second portion of my comment, then, if I can not continue to speak. Okay. Uh, be brief, please, Randy. Sure. It's just uh, to implore the council to not return to the secret of operations that occurred during the previous council and administration where we didn't hear much of the news that was happening from the officer uh, or anything otherwise. So as Randy mentioned, he said, please have a report on it. Uh, the, the second part of the comment is just on why Ron's contract was not renewed in the absence of a new CAO having been hired um, and thereby putting the village in a precarious situation uh, with less resources. So again, why did three councillors vote to terminate that contract when we had no CAO ready in place? Yes, so Mr. Mayor, if, if I may, um, this is related to the, the previous comments and, and Randy's comments. So um, litigation, legal matters aside, um, under the Freedom of Information and Protection of Privacy Act, Act, you have an obligation to not disclose personal information about current or former uh, employees. So I, I'm just cautioning, cautioning you that there should, there unfortunately, as much as I'm sure uh, council would like to be able to respond to some of these questions, um, you're bound by the privacy legislation to not comment on uh, a former or current employees um, personnel or contractual matters. Thank you very much, Deanna. Okay, we'll move to Norma. Hi, can you hear me? Yes. Good, okay. Hello all, I'm responding to Tanya Cosgrave's question to council about whether Lions Bay sanctions the watershed. Obviously it does not. This independent community publication has no relationship with council or administration other than editor Casey Dyer being a resident. Editor Dyer is careful to publish only verifiable fact in articles and invites residents to comment. Since the village has become very polarized, some spirited correspondence ensues in the comments sections. This is free speech. Yet Ms. Cosgrave is shocked by some comments that she claims are detrimental to the village. She named longtime residents for voicing their opinions and disrespecting counsel. I think publicly chastising residents with opposing views is divisive and not council business. Mayor and council were elected by their supporters, but need to govern for all residents. This council made sweeping changes and should expect to justify their actions to more skeptical residents. Taking office means accepting criticism and opposition as part of the job. I have noticed that written questions are responded to, but verbal questions during council meetings are not addressed. Could council determine some format to answer these questions publicly? Thank you. Councillor Cunliffe, did you want to, you would put out the... That's a very fair point, Norma. Thank you for bringing that to our attention. And we do need to have a discussion about how to respond to uh, public inquiries that are verbalized and not in written form. My, my best practice suggestion would be that you double down, speak, say, use your voice, but send an email as well until we uh, come up with some sort of system that seems to be a little bit more effective. Uh, Deanna, can you please give us your feedback or Randy uh, from a best practices? Yeah. So, so, and I and I and I don't know. I know perhaps in the past um, what was happening, and, and I wasn't here at the time. Is there may have you know been a lot of back and forth, and maybe perhaps 
um, <clears throat> that was getting to be a little out of hand, but it, it is best practice to respond. So if, if the mem members of the public have a question and they ask it during public question period, best practice is to respond to that question. Um, especially for the benefit of the rest of the public, so the public can hear the answer to that question. I think what you want to obviously try and avoid and what you've been trying to avoid with your current practice is getting into this whole back and forth. That is not the purpose. It's not meant to debate between councillors and members of the public. So if there's a way to, um, to manage uh, questions so that residents have their two minutes, it, it must be a question, and that a member, the mayor or a member of council is able to respond once to that question and then leave it at that without any any back and forth. I think that would be the best approach, but of course it's whatever um, whatever council feels works best. All right, Randy, can you give us your feedback, please? Uh, yeah, I, I, I agree with what Deanna is saying is generally what I've been advising you guys of. Uh, the only caveat I have to that is that you do not have to respond right away, and sometimes it's better to think about the answer before, <clears throat> excuse me, before you respond, so that you're giving the best possible answer you can. If you immediately respond to it, you you may be making some errors in judgment uh, uh, in the heat of the moment. You're better to think about a good answer, and get back to the citizen and the rest of the citizens who are who are in the, uh, who are listening in. So I, I just caution you, you don't have to answer the question right away. Think about it and, uh, and, and provide an answer a little later. All right, thank you. Can, can I make a comment here? I mean, we, we do, I, I've observed that wherever possible, and as Deanna is pointing out, that it, it would be uh, recommended to provide a response. Um, and it seems to me when I've stepped up in front of the previous council, that I, I appreciated getting an answer whenever it was possible to provide one. And uh, I think we should continue to do that wherever possible without getting into debates. Uh, but if somebody has something at the table here they wanna to speak to, I think that would be a good thing to do. Uh, I certainly remember uh, being on the outside and what it felt uh, like to pose a question and, um, and uh, wish to get an answer. Okay, I think I think our process has been to has been to respond if it's feasible to do in a in a you know timely way. I think we're, we've been doing that, so it will continue to do that. Okay, we'll take one more. So, Kim, if everyone's going to comment on that as well. Okay, <laughs> go ahead. I wasn't planning. We all need a comment. Yes, I agree. We should uh, we should respond when we can. Um, I remind yourself, for example, on the previous council when you when you were coming and speaking. Um, you know, I was one of the voices that continually asked people to get to have a say when they want to get a response. Um, so yeah, I, I continue to believe that as well. Um, but obviously, once again, the we need to find it out. The debate where it's appropriate. Yeah, we need to work it out and decide as a group just if we can uh, darken that gray line that, and get one line that everyone finds acceptable. Okay. So uh, open in the spirit of open and transparent communication, that's something we should discuss and land on a a formula that works for everyone. I, I agree with that. Okay, we'll take one more question and then uh, we'll get on with the agenda. Uh, Glenn Dodd. There we go. Thank you. Um, I um, wanted to uh, respond to, uh, to the fact that I noticed in last Friday's uh, Village News update that there was no mayor's message. And uh, I'm I'm a fairly busy guy in my practice. One of the things that I look I really enjoyed in the prior uh, with the prior uh, mayor and uh, was that we would get a weekly mayor's message and it would be an update that would tell us about what's going on in the village and it was a very quick way of uh, us finding out how our tax dollars were being used on a regular basis. So I was really surprised last Friday when there was no mayor's message. So I think I probably got the answer earlier today in your comments, uh, uh, Mayor Barry, but am I correct in saying basically you can't put out any mayor's message without approval of the rest of council? Well, it was voted down. So maybe I'll, I'll pass it over to Councillor Abbott or Councillor Reuter who voted against that. Voted right for it, Chief. Uh, for it, sorry, that uh, the mayor is in fact not allowed to say anything further to the uh, residents until 
I guess it's reevaluated in the fall. Is that what the motion uh, that was put forward? I think as uh, Mr. Dodds pointed out, he got his answer. Um, it was a closed meeting discussion, and that's what we reported out. Um, I think it'd be inappropriate to have any further discussion in the open other than what we agreed to report out. So, correct. So, uh, you know, I my initial... read the motion again. Sorry, I wonder if I wonder if it would be useful to read the read the um, reporting out again. I, I don't think we need to go read the reporting out again. Um, it, I'm, I'm asking if it might be appropriate to do that. Um, I, I, think I think there's some inappropriate. Well, maybe it would. Uh, the reporting out occurred at the beginning. Um, uh, we've we've uh, reported out everything that preceded that belongs in closed, and I think uh, anyone can refer to that. It's a significant. Uh, uh, I mean, gagging the mayor. Effectively, is okay. 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 Can, now you're really editorializing yeah. because you're gagging the mayor. Well, I can read the I, councilor. We had a closed discussion. You know what was discussed. We agreed that's what we're going to report out. So don't start making a speech about it. It's not politicized. Can we read this again? No. Yes. So uh, I would say that it was asked and answered. Good question. And we need to Move carry on. on with the agenda. Um, Thank you, Jeff. So I need to uh, respond to that and, and say that, first of all, you know, I'm not sure it's legal to gag somebody. We're not living in a third world dictatorship. We have free speech in Canada. And, and I have looked forward to that message from the mayor weekly and for council to say, as of now, he can't do that without our approval, I think is petty. I think that's the word that I would use. I, and, and uh, I am I am surprised that council would engage in that kind of uh, activity. I'm alarmed by it, frankly. Uh, and um, you know, it's it's clear that three councilors uh, at the table were part of this action to gag the mayor, and I just think it's dead wrong. So uh, with that. I will. Uh, I will pass. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Orders of the day. Okay. Just, um, just one comment, just for clarity. Um, the count. The resolution reads that no member of council will be put in until the end of the summer. We all get it. And and with all due respect, it it was a discussion in close. There was reasoning and thought put in behind it, and it was by no means a gag order. So. That is not an accurate comment. Okay, I'll highlight that uh, Councillor Broughton and the mayor opposed. Uh, right, and, and I'll just comment to what Neville said, that this is not aimed at any specific member of council, but the reporting out will make it clear that it applies to all members of council. And uh, certainly members of council can report out in the village update, but uh, that it requires approval at the council table prior. Pretty democratic. It'd be revisited next fall was, I think, the wording. Yes. Yeah. yeah. It will be. Yeah. Revisit next fall. Yeah. Yeah. State orders of the day. Okay. Uh, we'll move to, was there any delegations? No? Okay. We'll move to item number seven, review and approval of the minutes prior meetings. Uh, we have a motion to approve November 24th, 2022. So move. Set of minutes. Second. Second. Discussion. Question. Councilor Broughton. Oh, question. Go ahead. No. Uh, okay. All in favor? Okay. I'll put Councilor Abbott. Yes, Councilor Ryder, you'll go next. As to 7A, is that your? I, 7A, yeah. Yep. I have yeah. a comment on these that I was in. Okay. Set, so. okay. So, Councilor Abbott, do you have any comments? Um, yes. Okay, sorry, no, it's more matters mm -hmm. arising. I can't play I'm, I'm okay with those ones. Okay. Councilor Ryder? I'm fine with 7A. Uh, Councilor Brown? Fine. Yeah. Okay, all in favor? Aye. Yes. Yes. Opposed? Carried. Okay. Uh, the minutes from November 30th, 2022. We have a motion to approve those. So moved. Second. Sorry, November 30th? November 30th, 2022. Yeah, may I'm going to What happened to? 
and the audio will be the next one. Okay. Special Council meeting on November 24th. I'm sorry, I lost my place here. There was something. Like that. Okay, Council Ryder, any comments? Did, now, did you have something? I had something on the previous one. The material that we want to go back to. Um, yeah, I, I just to the accuracy of the minutes um, on on page seven. Um, this is the special council meeting November twenty fourth. Um, and the uh, B one resolution says two council members acting as this is about the beach park committee as chair and co chair, and then it goes on to say. Councillors Broughton and Barmer, chair and co-chair. Um, didn't we decide at the time that they were they were co-chairs? No. Yes, we did. No, we didn't. Yeah. No. I on the minutes for our prayer. I believe uh, you were chair and and uh, yeah. Councillor Barmer was oh, so, and then when you joined uh, the committee, the council became the system said we'll make you co-chairs. That's right. Okay. I, I think we'd seen co-chair and co-chair and that we then corrected that. Um, so it should be corrected in here. I agree with Neville. It was chair, it was co-chairs. Okay, I recall we had a chair, we had a, a, a the, the assistant or, or co-chair, you want a co-chair? Yeah. And then when we added you, Neville, we made you both equal chairs, co-chairs. That's right, yeah. Okay. Can I just say something in the interest of getting these minutes approved, which is, I think, what uh, our auditors need? You want them to be wrong? Um, uh, would would co-chairs uh, be that difficult to swallow here? Yeah, when the minutes are written like this, and then we've, we've got a, a, a sort of a deadlock here on on the on how they were interpreted. Uh, how do you how do you resolve that? So my suggestion, if you have the time and not right now, of course, to move things along would be to go back and, and watch the recording. The recording will be able to confirm what was actually said and decided. It's a closed meeting. I don't know that there is a recording. It wouldn't. It wasn't closed. It's a closed meeting. Why are we well, I'm sorry. It's a special meeting. I'm sorry. It's a special meeting. meeting. Now it's a closed meeting. I'm sorry. It's a special meeting. Yeah. Okay. Why don't, we, why don't we just do this? Why don't we move along? Because we, we, these need to be approved for a certain reason. We're taking action to go back and look. Okay, that's November 24th, which we already approved it. So we approved it. Can we and we went back and we we're arguing it. Can we can we take an action to go back and do as the says this is recording this is Okay, Deanna, we, we've approved these minutes and now we're we're endeavoring to go back and look at them. Do we just leave it as approved and we go back and look at these? I think you can leave them as approved subject to cor to correcting them or confirming the confirmation. Confirming yeah, confirming uh, their correct. Yeah, could, could be, yeah, leave it subject to confirmation. Okay. Yeah. That sounds good. Yeah. All right. November 30th. Confirmation, not a correction. Just, yeah. Thank you. Okay. Okay. Uh, motion to approve November 30th, 2022. I'm good at that one. Okay. A second. Questions? Edits? Comments? No. Okay. All in favor? Sure. I opposed, carried. Okay, uh, motion to approve December 8th, 2022 minutes. The motion to move. Second. Yep. Okay, comments, edits. None for me. Okay, yeah, that's the, the special portion, yes. And, uh, and, and the special council meeting in the open, right? That's right. Yeah, that's right. All in favor? Yes. yes. I opposed. Carried. Okay. Uh, June 6th, motion to accept June 6th, 2023 20, minutes. Motion, please. Motion moved. Second. Okay. Questions, comments? Um, under Section 6A, um, the order of the Lions Bay General Store presented, and the it, it was uh, Broughton and Broughton Incorporated doing business as the Lions Bay General Store in Canada. Cafe. I just wanted to clarify that the company Broughton and Broughton Incorporated is owned by the owner of the store and the property. So they purchased the company and, and that I have no affiliation with that. Okay. There's, there's some confusion that occurs from time to time because the company was sold. 
Do you, do you want something corrected in a minute? No, no, no. Okay. it's just the point of information. All right. Okay, any other edits, comments? I've got a comment, it's page 18 uh, under, under B on the page um, uh, in reference to the org chart. Um, it says discussion ensued on the development of the organizational chart. Um, I think it'd be fair to say that comment was also provided that this uh, was not, in fact, the org chart um, of the village. Um, I think we had some emails we received the next day saying that it was simply a suggestion. Um, and I think the uh, agreement at the table was that we would revisit the org chart uh, at council. I believe it was the strategy session. Right. Yeah. Okay. I think we all agreed it was information purposes and we would revisit it. Is that Next correct? Strategy session. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So any other comments? So the as the, the edit would be that what the uh an organizational chart was included for informational purposes, and it was agreed at the table that this was a suggestion by staff and that the development of the and visitation of the org chart would occur at council at a future date. Uh, Councilor Brown. I think we agree that minutes would not be a narrative of the meeting. I think uh, the first part of that comment would be accepted, but but not the ongoing. Okay. Well, uh, Deanna, can you give us some guidance on on uh, revisions here? Um, so, so because there, I don't believe there was a resolution attached to this, so I I think a you know a little summary of what. Uh, my understanding was the org chart was presented for information as the current state of things. Um, and that, as I think uh, Councillor Reuter noted, that you'd be revisiting um, the org chart at the strategic planning session. So I think something along those lines is enough, a few points. Yeah. If that's accurate, okay. that's how yeah, I'm good that. calls the conversation. Yeah, I'm good with that. <laughs> Councillor yeah. Kenneth. Okay. And I just have one question. Under new business, we have 14A noise relaxation from agenda right. 6A. This item was missed, but it reads to me under 6A that we discussed noise relaxation. So I'm just unclear as to why that's even in there. Somebody to have some light to shed? No, we didn't. To Sorry, what number? No, 6A, we agreed. We were discussing it. That we would discuss it later, I believe. Which we did not do. And we did not do that. Okay. Yeah. We didn't get there. Okay. That would clear things up. It'd be added as item 14A. And that was carried. It was added, added as item 14A. And then we did not discuss it as it was after. Okay. Thank you, Maria. Okay, any other edits? All in favor? Yes. Yeah. Opposed? Carried. Okay. Uh, business arising from minutes. Um, I just have a couple to make sure we get into the log. Um, on, on the item, uh, on, on full focus, this presentation in, in the meeting, I think that and several other Discussions have come to light on that lately, and we do need to have an EPC meeting. Um, urgency. Um, opinion. Well, not in my opinion. It is urgent. So, what, what, how, do we, how do we get this to happen? In I talked to uh, Phil uh, about calling the meeting. He said he would call it uh, uh, in the next week or two. Uh, I think uh, his exact words were. were, were he was a little disturbed at our last council meeting and he, he couldn't bring himself to calling a meeting. So he, uh, I said, set that aside, Phil, and, and uh, move on with business. So he'll call on a meeting. Right. Okay, any other comments? Yeah, I think we should just commit to having a meeting within the next week or two, because that three years dragged on and it's really I agree. And there's no political discussions in those meetings ever. So that we need to just get on with such. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Good. Okay, we all agree on that. We need okay. to get on with the emergency planning meeting. Uh, okay, uh, all in favor? It's, I'm sorry. No, are we, this is, this is, uh, is this arising? This is arising. Sorry, any other items? 6A was not. Oh. 6A. Um, 
uh, put put the discussion of this matter of that matter, particular matter to 14A. It was ne then not discussed. Um, it would not be appropriate to discuss it this time because it was missed. Are you saying it would not be appropriate? No, would it not? Would it not? Yeah, it would. It, it would be appropriate to discuss it now. I think to summarize. Yeah, it would be appropriate. Well, technically, we should have then added it at the beginning at the adoption of the agenda, right? And so we're beyond that point. Okay, is this business arising from this particular set of minutes? It is business arising from this. Do you want to make a motion on that? Um, okay. Um, the request under 6A, what did you request? Um, Mr. Doherty requested an exemption from the village by noise bylaw to allow for music at the Lions Bay store and patio for the council's full term. That, that was the motion that he requested that we consider? Yes. 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 Okay, so I would move. Uh, it was it was tighter than that. Okay, there's not enough detail here to move. I'm sorry. Yeah. Okay, I recall yeah, the discussion we had given him the approval for this year for this year for last year. Uh, I, well, this year what, did it end sometime in the fall? Was it? It was from. Yeah. It's on the yeah. previous term. It was on the previous term. It would have been full. Yeah. 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 And then we were going to discuss it in more detail and yeah. about extending. Yeah. So we didn't have the discussion. No. So he's good till the fall. He's good till the fall. No, no, no. The previous council extended to this fall. No, no. At the end of last year. We never approved this summer. Otherwise, was asking us otherwise Craig wouldn't have approved this summer. And yeah. then the subsequent three summers. Yes. So we haven't, we have no, we have not made any decisions. Yeah, he had a function this summer, I believe, wasn't wasn't that it? That we needed yeah, the, during the month of June, and he needed was hoping to facilitate get. planning. Do we want to approve that and then look yeah. at the longer term at a later time, or could we look at, at the request that he made for this year from today's date until the end of September? I think is what what the request was, something like that. It wasn't the request. Mm -hmm. That wasn't the request. The request was for the rest of the term. cover for the rest of the yeah. term. Yeah. And I'm not. Um, would you let, okay, we could suggest that. I'm not suggesting that. I think mean, you're right. We need to have a more fulsome discussion on it. Right. Has, has he, does he have an event? In He's got an event, I think, either this month or in July. And so yeah, out of respect, I think we, he, he's got to do planning. We, we need to either. Yeah, out of respect for the request that was made and it was not followed through in the last meeting, I'm asking is if we could give him approval from the date of his request to the end of September for this year only, and then we can he can come back and ask for the rest of our term. But in order to facilitate the intent of of getting the noise realization, that we I, I would move that we grant the exemption of the village noise bylaw from uh, today's date until September the 30th, 2023. Okay, I'm looking for a second. I'll second. Okay, I'll have a second. Any discussion? Um, yes, there's a discussion. I thought there was more asks in it than just that. Wasn't there a timing ask in the time of night, which is different to what we had last year? Um, I, I just think we need to discuss this. I mean, what I'm suggesting maybe we do is we approve any events he has between now and the next meeting, and then bring it on the next meeting with a resolution, with the with the actual presentation, else. so we can look at it and approve it in proper. But we don't but between now and the next meeting, so it doesn't. Uh, I, how about I'm I'm just his trying. next event if it's so he he, he can plan for that, mm -hmm. and then anything past his next event, like I'm. I recall he had something in the next month or six weeks. I think, he's and that's why he was... I think he has more than one thing. Okay. So as to Neville's point, why don't we grant an ad hoc exemption on any events that he between has now, between now the next and the next now meeting, now the and then we'll meeting. visit this at the next meeting. Okay. That's... Okay. okay. All in favor. Is that a friendly amendment? Yeah. yeah. All in favor. 
Uh, yes. Yeah. Okay. okay. Any other items? Um, yeah. I'm, another thing to uh, put on the uh, unfinished business log, page 18, um, like building in. Um, mm -hmm. You reported that there'd been a meeting. I'm not sure whether you attended the meeting. Um, but we, I think we were looking for a council report as to right. I had heard there, yeah, I had heard there was a meeting. Uh, didn't attend it. Um, Carl, I believe, would probably have more information. If... Can we get a report from the next council? All right, Carl, you're right there. Any information? Okay, um, let's put it on the list. The other option is if we can get an EPC meeting, then maybe it's discussed in that forum. Um, but we do, we need, the council does need some sort of update of what's going on. I mean, there's two aspects here. There's Carl, the project. Maybe Carl and I can can rally that group together and have a meeting and report back. Might be useful. Okay. This CEO could acquire. Okay. Just say that. Okay. Okay. Any other items? No. Okay. Uh, with that, we'll move on to unfinished business. Item number nine, uh, follow-up items. Uh, 265, follow-up with the ministry regarding vacancy tax. Report back to council. Council writer. Ongoing. Tough nut to crack. Um, hard slogging, but uh, ongoing. Okay. Item number 280, action item list is updated regularly. That's Marina. And that was in response to the list seemed to be skinny. Um, so I think we can let's highlight it. I think we could probably strike that now because we are doing it and the list is expanding mm -hmm. to where it should be. But... So strike 280? Yeah. Yep. Makes sense. Okay, 281, look into the re, uh, reconstruction of speed pumps on Bayview Road near Lions Bay Elementary School. Um, Carl, since you're here, it says ongoing. No, I provided a report to council on uh, the, the, the cost implications, uh, and the recommendation was not to change them. Yeah. That's for council to decide whether they want to give credence to that recommendation. Okay, uh, motion to not change the speed pumps. Isn't that in the in your report? It was in a supplemental report that I emailed to council. Okay, so it's not, it's not in any agenda item. It's not in the agenda. No. Okay. Do we want to strike that or do you want to have a motion to not change the speed bumps? Um, why don't we, the person to put it on the table, why don't we ask him? Okay. Um, <laughs> it was Marcus. Marcus has a motion on the table to change the speed bumps. Uh, second. Uh, yeah, I think you, you put about, you asked for a report of what it would yeah. cost and the impact of it. You didn't necessarily say you wanted to change. Take yeah. Do you, do you all want to discuss this now a little bit or save it for later? Well, we're going to strike it, uh, I think, unless we discuss it. So why don't we discuss it? So, uh, Carl, just to verify, to add the speed bumps was going to add. I don't remember offhand, but it's in your email. If you it was twenty thousand dollars or something. I think it was a range for one and twenty thousand for something else, which I don't remember what it was. Uh, the it was very expensive. Oh, could I could I make a suggestion? This is not this is not time bound on anything particular. Yeah. Why why don't we bring the, to the next meeting with the information? I suppose by the next meeting will be adequate time because uh, we issued the PO to the contractor yesterday mm -hmm. and they are gearing up to go. Yeah, so this would have to be a change order anyway. Yeah, the point is that it will have to be done together if it was to be done. Uh, given the fact that grinding off the speed humps, actually, not bumps, uh, which are actually the designated crosswalks for the school, means we'll have to put in painted crosswalks and speed bumps, which is current. Which will actually be worse for your clients because they're actually now bumps, U shaped rather than. So the recommendation was we wouldn't gain anything uh, other than spending more money and so to leave well enough alone. Councillor, sorry, Councillor Brown. Uh, I would support that we not proceed. So a motion to not proceed. Support the recommendation of the public works manager to not proceed. 
Okay, second on that. I'll second, but I just have a, a question for Carl. Would there be any need to actually discuss with the with SD45 if we were to not saying to do this now, but in the future? Would we need no, to engage uh, because we would be adhering to the manual of uniform traffic control devices, which is standard for school crossings. Okay. Uh, in the most we had to change the signs recently. No, I don't think we, they, they would expect us as the authority having jurisdiction to get it right. Okay. Yep. Can, can I ask you a question? Why are we talking about crossings there when the walkway is on the west side? There is no designated walkway on the right. The, the, the walkway comes up the east side of Bayview until some point when people cross over in a fairly random way, diagonally 90 degrees, we have to provide a designated crosswalk. And I actually, funny enough, checked this afternoon. Mm -hmm. There is one there with the crossbars painted. I see the crossbars. I thought those were traffic calming measures, but I, I have never observed any cross space. Crossbars. Yeah. Underneath the children crossing sign. Because we can't tell them which side to walk on because uh, below the school, the west side of Bayview mm -hmm. is not walkable. So they walk on the east side. At some point, they cross over to the west. They cross over, but that's nowhere near the, the bumps. The crossover, and then there's a, a, an elevated sidewalk on the west side, yeah. and there's in fact no crosswalk there that I've seen. That's yes, yeah. that's the crosswalk right now. We'd have to continue to fly it somewhere. Mm -hmm. And then there's an upper bump uh, uh, where there is no crosswalk yeah. and no designated walking on the east side. I'm not saying the bumps make any sense, right? But if we take the bumps out, we're going to have humps. Mm -hmm. If we take the humps out, we're going to have to provide bumps. <laughs> I, Explain I, the difference between a hump and a bump. <laughs> it's appropriate that it's next to the school, I think. <laughs> the humps, yeah, humps and bumps. Uh, the, the humps are non-standard, but they're uh, uh, non-conforming use. So, we mm -hmm. hump, 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 better, hump, not better. But we know what we're talking about. We're talking about uh, a, a, a traffic calming measure that can either you know, work to slow traffic and and or uh, ruin vehicles and create a bunch of noise for the residents who live there. I mean, my suggestion was just to channel them out of it. They're very poorly designed. I mean, you've driven them up and down them multiple times with the work truck, I'm sure, and I've experienced that. I'm glad you're not the work truck. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, well, I mean, yeah. Can, I, can, I, can I suggest that it's not going to happen now? Yeah. If we do want to revisit it and come back with some sort of the thoughts and information, it sounds like a more fulsome discussion required. Mm -hmm. Motion is to support the recommendation. Okay. Uh, All in favor? Opposed? Opposed? I'll abstain from that one. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh, any other items? Ah, here we go. Sorry. Apologies. Uh, hiring seasonal summer staff council for discussion. We have two seasonal staff that uh, were interviewed and are available or were available. Um, don't know what your thoughts are. Uh, These office staff? Yeah. If that's personnel, it should probably go into the closed. Yeah. Okay. We all agree we'll move that to closed. Most, okay. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Item ten reports the staff. Uh, Carl, mm -hmm. you'll please report on the uh, signage at the railway crossing. Okay. Well, thank you. I um, I don't have anything to add to the report uh, that you've already received, other than to reiterate the recommendation, which is to follow the. Uh, the ISO engineering reports um, findings, uh, amending stop signage in other places and adding paint for the double railway stops and putting in, that's about it, uh, putting in three stop signs, I believe, maybe it was four. But the report stands, I have nothing new to add. What can we do on the, uh, coming down the hill, uh, just listening to, uh, the explanation earlier and 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 my experience is if that stop sign isn't there, there is a, a sort of a, a an area that you can't see on the other side. So if children are coming up that road from the beach, there's definitely a blind spot as you come over that hump. And I know with a stop sign, if you don't stop, people at least kind of slow down. 
But when I come up to that, and I pass it many times a day, I definitely, there's a blind spot. And, and I think, um, Brenda speaking earlier, that sort of rung true on, on okay, how, how are we going to, you know, with that stop sign out of there, are people going to go faster than they should over that blind spot with the potential for children coming up that hill? That's my comments. I, it definitely is a blind spot, and that made me pause and think maybe we need something and leave that stop sign there, but put the other stop signs in. I, that's I, my feeling. I can't comment. I, you know, I, I only have the report to go on. It wasn't part of the uh, formal discussion. Uh, right. I would agree there is a blind spot there. I would say that the report says that uh, if you're heading south on Lines Bay Avenue, they report, they, they recommend a stop being placed right there, right. about 25 meters back from where the railway crossing is. So that traffic would stop. That wouldn't, people coming down the hill wouldn't even necessarily see them. There's also a stop coming up from the marina recommended in the report and a stop exiting the parking lot, if, if you recall what the report says. Mm -hmm. It doesn't address people coming down the hill fast. I remind you that we were notified by CN, not by Transport Canada, but by the railway operator that they are going to, they've been ordered to install a second set of lights. They still haven't responded to me what that actually means. Does that mean putting more red lights on the poles that are there? Or is, is it something as, as big as putting railway type flashing lights further up the hill, further up on the I don't know. I'm going to talk about the problem. Okay, the, the report is clearly about vehicles and the railway, and it's coming from the perspective of the railway uh, trying to keep road cars off the tracks and and down, 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 down. Um, there's no consideration of, of pedestrian traffic there in, in, in the report. And uh, last time we talked about the fact that there's some angst about the fact that we even had a report done. You know, I did the report of, I was pretty upset that the, the budget item was put in place. It was a $30,000 budget item put in place by previous council. What? The actual, the actual um, cost of the, of the report was 17,000. It was reported out that it was like a, almost like a savings, but the 17,000 to me was, was totally unnecessary. But the, I'd just like to, to, to read a statement quickly. I think it'll be the fastest way to get my ideas across. Um, the staff recommend, this is regarding the staff, staff recommendation to council May 31st, with all due respect to our public works manager, Mr. Bird. Uh, these recommendations must not proceed and must be defeated if in fact they're going to be uh, moved at all. The Village of Lions Day has the last say on the placement of stop signs. This is consistent with the Federal Transportation Act. All traffic on a roadway must be considered in any decision regarding the roadway as per the BC Motor Vehicle Act. And in this particular report, only vehicles were con considered in the, in the decision. And this was a car study. Um, the roadway must be considered within the context, which is why the village has, has the responsibility here. Removal of the westbound stop signs will decrease safety to village residents and to others. And transparency dictates that residents must be input on this material change in safety for our village and no resident input has, has been sought, certainly wasn't as part of the study. Um, the railway crossing report is based on national railway crossing standards and is completely focused on vehicle traffic flow and risk of railway vehicle incidents. No mention is made nor any, any data collected on the pedestrian traffic, traffic in each of these three rail crossing areas. All three locations are conduits to Beach Park and other areas for adults, children, pets, and families. They are the route of all, in all three locations for many who must park across the train tracks in parking lots at Kelvin Grove, at Brunswick, and Lions Bay Avenue. Many residents, both adults and children, walk to the beach from their homes and must cross at these crossings. Uh, all three crossings entertain highway and tourist traffic during the exact periods when pedestrian traffic is at its peak. 
Voters unfamiliar with their village explore each of these settings and are unaware of the risks that they may impose on pedestrians. Each crossing is at the end of a long, curved, and sloping roadway, and each has complicated decisions to be made while at the crossing. Now, traffic engineers have studied the crossings and the relocations of the signs on the west side of the tracks, and, and those, I, I, I actually applaud the, the uh, placement of the signs on the west side of, on the west side of the road. Uh, they create an intersection feeling, and I think will create more safety. However, um, the um, removal of the stop signs westbound in each location creates a totally unnecessary and unacceptable risk to all, not all non-vehicle roadway users, which includes, and this is not an exhaustive list, scooters, bikes, trikes, skateboards, strollers, accessibility walkers, wheelchairs, pets, children, and adults. And many of those adults often carry children and carrying beach crab, chairs, bags and other equipment, reducing their ability to avoid harm and uh, to avoid it. Lions Bay Avenue is clearly the most active and at the same time, most dangerous for toxins to pedestrians. Severe blind spots exist uh, where, where pedestrians, in particular children, cannot be seen. This is particularly challenging for larger vehicles, SUVs, pickup trucks, and box vans. And, um, Box vans are starting to deliver on weekends, which has become even more critical on, that, on this area. Lions Bay as a municipality has control of its roadways in the best interest of the safety of the residents and visitors. In our case, our roadways are also our walkways, and as such, all traffic and all users must be protected. This is stated in the Federal Transportation Act and the, and the Provincial Motor Vehicle Act. Traffic, traffic on the roadway is, is anything on that roadway, and the report received by council is narrowly confined to the interests of the railway. The roads of Lions Bay exist within a larger context, and it is the village responsibility to protect, to protect the village. I move, therefore, that the recommendation be defeated, if in fact it's forwarded, and that any recommendations be brought forward only if the westbound stop signs remain. And once this motion is defeated, I would further move that MP Patrick Weiler and MLA Jordan Sturdy be informed of our decision and that we seek their support should it be required to ensure the safety of our residents. All right. Okay, sorry to go on, but I think it's very important um, to give up safety. I think it's Councilor, unacceptable. Come left. Well, as it stood with last council, and my understanding from the last meeting is this is a requirement and as with every other community in Canada, we're bound by this decision and we really don't have a choice. Is that your understanding? That's my understanding. This is, uh, this is a rail decision. Uh, rails are federally regulated. Um, I believe their requirements trump all. Yes. Uh, in Lions Bay's case, the reason we pay for rail crossings is because they were there first. Um, it's just how it is. I don't like it any more than you do, Councillor Bradford. Um, I, I would suggest, I would have suggested that maybe we could move the stop sign, the westbound stop sign, uh, 10 meters up or something, have people stop there. It doesn't solve the blind spot problem. Mm -hmm. I believe our hands are tied. That's, That's my understanding. Uh, I, I'd like to be, I'd like to stand corrected. Be stand, be stood correct. You know what I mean? Yes. Um, you mentioned you could move the stop sign up. Is that an option? We could move it up with just a slow. We, we could put one there, yes, because it's our road. It's no longer the railway's uh, uh, bellywick. And I think I use that term advisedly. Um, but it wouldn't solve the blind spot problem. But it would slow you down. It would certainly stop enough. there, yes. It would slow you down enough that. You could, in fact, put a stop sign. Again, depending on what, what CN has in mind with the second set of lights that they that they told us we're going to pay all of or half of. Um, we could put a stop sign, make a two-way stop exiting the parking lot, for example. That's our road. We can do with it as we want. Hey, um, Councillor Abbott. Um, I hate to throw good money after bad, and I uh, <laughs> if they were going out to these consultants anyway. 
Um, however, if we now have C and rail telling us they put in additional lights in, and we don't understand that, or well, how does this report stand? Because there's one other factor um, that hasn't been considered. Um, point. I mean, but, you know, I, I would probably say, I did mention it at the time in the report, it arrived on the day that I wrote the report, yeah. so I had time to sort of digest it. It may be that you want to table it a, a little while longer until we actually understand from CN what it is that... Well, especially if we pay for it, they should tell us what we're going to do. I mean, just remember, so the project will cost uh, 128. Uh, we're either going to pay half of it, 56, whatever the math is. 64. Thank you. Uh, or half of that if uh, Transport Canada just thumps up 50% 50, 50 grant that CN is applying for. Again, we don't have a choice. It's just, they were here first, and they, they pulled that card many, many a time. Council Ryder? Yeah, I, I think we're, we're in, in front of a hard line here. I think uh, that uh, it's a pity we... Uh, you know, already spent the money on this uh, report. We could have moved the stop signs back then and uh, uh, saved that bit of money. But uh, I think we've got to move forward with what we have in front of us here and uh, wait to see what happens with the uh, further set of lights, if possible. I agree. Okay. We're going to go around the table one more time. One more question. To your knowledge, the trucks that spit on the rail line, do they trigger the lights? Yes. They do. Okay. Yeah. And bells. An argument uh, bells. Well, you know, there's, there's, there's lights only at Kelvin. Yeah. There's lights and bells at the lines we have. And there's uh, crossing arms at yeah. Yeah. Uh, they, they That's one of the reasons they, they move the truck before every train is to check that's working. Okay. Thank you. Council Brown. Uh, every bureaucracy has an override. And that's when you have things that don't make sense reviewed by real people. And uh, we have a situation where we have a, a, radio, a, a railway initiative impacting local safety. And that is unacceptable. And it needs to be pointed out to whoever is required to support that, to support that. And in the meantime, there's no urgency that, that, this, that this move ahead. I believe the compliance is 2024 or something. I don't but, even know that a deadline was promulgated, but I do know that uh, my predecessors' uh, responses to Transport Canada were quite um, conciliatory. So I, I had the feeling that he had been asked quite emphatically, why is this not in place yet? So I, I don't know what the deadline is. Uh, yeah, I can't speak about it later. I apologize. Yeah, no, I, um, I appreciate that. I don't know, but I believe that we don't have a choice. I think we have to come up with a pragmatic solution, which may be simply putting stop sign somewhere else outside their, their less than benign uh, influence. Yeah, I, well, I believe that we do have a choice. I believe that we do need to proceed with that choice because, and I, and I don't believe that putting, putting uh, our residents in harm's way is an acceptable option. Um, and, and I think that that needs to be pointed out. You you pointed that out, Michael, at length. Can I just I have. Have, have my second comment here? Is that we wouldn't be in this spot if there hadn't been so much uh, attention uh, and that you brought a lot of attention to that at that point. And then we it resulted in this $17,000 study. We could have just moved some signs up the hill at that time, but this is a mess of our own making or uh, to some degree. And I think that now we're at that point where we just have to move ahead and uh, and hope for the best on the uh, on the possible second set of lights. So I think we're we are where we are. Unfortunately. OK, um, um, I don't respond to to that. OK, that's her problem. Um, I'm, not, I'm unclear what your inference is here. That 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 I've drawn attention to this. The the, original mo the the motion brought forward by the previous public works manager was to remove the stop signs. I recall you and another early gallery member uh, uh, litigating very strongly in the same way that you are now. Mm -hmm. That resulted in a study 
that cost us $17,000. If I can just complete, you're asking for clarification. And now we are being pushed to the wall. I would also contest your claims that we are in complete control of the roads in our municipality. To some degree, we are, but uh, not when it comes to situations like this. And that's where we are now. So, um, Councilor Brown, did you initiate that study? No, I didn't ever say that he initiated no, the study. I didn't initiate it. In fact, I, I could spoke provide strongly clarity against it. Yeah. That there was concern by several residents in the previous council about this. We felt our hands were tied by CN, which I, I feel is the case. Uh, but we did pursue a report to see if there was anything we could possibly do to change what the outcome that CN was mandating. And it did result in this engineering report, which Carl, I do believe you said was for the most part, if we spent the money, it was at least spent well. Yeah, I think it leaves us knowing where we stand. I believe when I asked them exactly, what did we do this for and what did you tell us that we didn't know? Uh, they said you, it, is, it is emphatic and unequivocal that you cannot have stop signs on a railway, federally regulated railway. Uh, I agree that they didn't consider pedestrians to the extent they needed to at all. Uh, well, they did mention pedestrians in the They did, but, uh, but not much. They, they somewhat assumed that there might be pedestrians without necessarily realizing that's the only way to, for a lot of pedestrians. Mention something about the car park it creates pedestrians. But yes, I stand. Yeah. Um, I'll also point out that there are no, there's no actual parking lots on, on the far side of any of the railway crossings. Uh, Brunswick and Kelvin the same. So, so when people are crossing to where they're going, which is usually the beach, they're, they're not only crossing at Lions Bay up, they're crossing in the other two places as well. So, yeah, I mean... I'm not sure what you're saying. You said that there were parking lots on the other side of, of the railway crossings. There's, there's not. They're all on the up. Yeah, on the up. Yeah, they're on the up side, yeah. I mean, I could suggest that perhaps Council uh, move to table this decision, I think we can probably wait for whatever it is that CN has in mind. I, I will push them as hard as I can. CN, I don't know if you know, when you turn their yeah. logo upside down means says no. Um, Have you talked to CNF? Any? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I, I can assure you if they don't uh, respond, they don't need to. They've been here since before Confederation. So if we could push it till you get an answer about the intention of the second set of lights. We could at least preserve the stop signs for the summer months where there is a higher, con can, like a lot more pedestrian traffic than there would be in say on a rainy November day. Sure, I mean, you know, I, it, it's not been established in any sort of uh, quantitative way that moving the stop signs will reduce safety. I mean, that's sort of anecdotal, you think that might be the case, but uh, um, we don't know that. Um, we could certainly push it, but it's just going to push it back one more year. We're just, yeah, I, we're spinning our wheels here. It's CN. But I, I think the, the, the additional, the unknown right now is what it is that CN's going to do. Yeah. And I suggest that that might not actually something that you have to always have to be careful what you wish for, but that might be a big flashing yellow light with a bell halfway up the uphill side of the lines way up. Yeah. We don't know that yet. But but that will occur or not occur independent of what decision we make here. Right. So yeah. yeah. That's again, you know, it's relevant. Yeah, but it buys some time to to buy it buys another year, yeah, sure. Yeah. Another summer. Maybe a life. Well, I mean, nobody's been hurt yet. So uh, yeah, that's right. I, I'm not, I know you don't want to miss with a good thing. Okay. Uh what was the motion? Call of question. Uh, the motion was at the table. The motion on the table is to reject the recommendation. To reject the recommendation. I would, Do we want to table this then? That would be a new motion. An amendment. I guess what are we going to do between now and, and the next decision point? So um, I, I'm not ready to re reject the recommendation. Um, not, I think. Um, yeah. We asked for this, we've got the answer, just because we don't like the answer, we can't just you know, ignore it. Um, I'm, I also, you know, in the previous council, we, there was much discussion about, you know, do we have the authority to just move it, put another stop sign, um, slightly further up the hill at the end of 
the you know the jurisdiction of mining, whatever that battery limit line is. And we were told we were told no, we don't we don't really have that. No, um, so I, it depends where exactly. And we are the authority having jurisdiction with the road authority in this particular case. Um, they use that against us, saying that we have to make the change um, because it's our stop sign uh, and their railway. But uh, no, I mean we can put we can put traffic control devices anywhere we want. Uh, it has to be better if that makes sense. But um, I don't know if you've been out there. There's lots of traffic control devices out there right now. Informal ones. <laughs> so the motion on the table from you, Michael, is to. Defer no, or to reject. to reject. To reject. So I guess that's the recommendation. I guess it's looking for a second at this point. It has been second. Correct. I'll second it. I I don't like that blind spot. Somehow we need to slow traffic down there. Uh, I, I wouldn't want to see it come fl flying over because I know when I come over that I I can't see what's on the other side and I'm always thinking of a kid or something else. So I, I, I don't like that. And it's very it's slow. Slow. Yeah. Um, I, I don't know what can be done about it, but if we tabled it or deferred it, um, maybe maybe you can look into it more or or Carl or, well, I think or I, I'm, I'm supposed to connect with the CNN guy before Canada Day. I don't know whether he's probably a public relations guy, but um, you know, I'm, I'm willing to ask the questions, but um, I'll skip for a mug. Turn it upside down. Turn it upside down. Yeah. Um, the the other risk for without uh, authorizing more expenditure on this bill, I mean, we find this uh, this engineer, um, telling him is very is very sketchy on these discussion of pedestrians. Did he consider them? Did he put something in his report? I, I've um, uh, I've tried that, and they are incredibly defensive. I think they realized that it was probably a bit thin. Try again. Uh, they pushed back on every one of the objections that I made to the report. Um, what we could do perhaps is say that uh, council orders a review of the report for no extra money because it was it was it was thin. Good luck with that. We, uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah. we paid the bill. Yeah, oh, yeah, long ago. Yeah, long ago. Not going to happen. No. Okay. Uh, we either. Okay. Call the question, or we defer it to, to out past the summer months. What would you like to do? Well, could we table it at this point and, and uh, see what other information? You'd need an amending motion to. to mm -hmm. the table. Okay. You want to amend that? I'll amend to both amend to table. Yes. So okay. Do we just give you clear what we mean by table? Because we we we've been through this before. Um, Mr. Mayor, can I may, may I interrupt for a moment? Yes, sure. Thanks, Diana. So, so um, a motion to table or defer overrides a current motion on the floor. So, if you want to, if you want to, typically a ta to table a motion means you're going to take it up later in the meeting. Um, so, I would suggest that you move to defer the matter to, if you want to set a time or if you want to just be vague about a future meeting. I would just recommend that there be a motion to defer the matter to a future meeting, subject to whatever conditions. Um, and additional information that you're looking for. Okay, but Deanna, De just a question. There, there's a motion on the table that's been seconded to reject. That's okay. The report and that's right. No, motion to to defer overrides that. That's right. That's correct. Yeah, a motion okay. to defer a table overrides any other motion on the floor. Okay. This kind of freezes that. So, but that would be a deferring of of the current motion, right? Okay. okay. Yeah. okay. Correct. A motion to defer. So I move move to defer till the fall. Uh, until what you're deferring is is the rejection was the original motion, yeah. namely the rejection of the report that that your recommendation that we don't act on it. That's right. Okay. So Second. Can perform a miracle of summer months. Yes, that's was total charging. Is, okay. is is the deferment rather than time bound and be bound based on further information? One is, what are they going to do with the second set of lights, and where does it go? I mean, I just, I just feel we need to understand that. Certainly, have to understand that. That might be one condition. Another one might be calendar based. Another one might be having discussion with MLA and MP. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
So subject to the, well, but my follow-up motion was, once it was defeated, the motion was defeated, was to contact our MP and, and our MLA to uh, inform them of the decision and seek any support we require. So that was, that, that was stand. Okay, so we defer and you will reach out. Yeah. yeah. We'll okay. defer and you're going to reach out the MLA, MP and... Okay, and so, uh, so the motion would revisit that I will reach out. And, and the workshop manager is going to find out from CN one way or the other what their plan is for the last. Yeah. So we're deferring until the works, public works manager has reached out for, regarding the CN, and I'm being authorized to reach out to both our MP and MLA regarding this matter. Is that right? right. Okay. okay. So hang on, just to be clear, we're deferring a decision on 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 following through here, or we're, we're what, what are we deferring exactly? I think we're deferring a decision. I mean, we should take off whether we're deferring a rejection or deferring an approval. Doesn't really matter, does it? Uh, we're just deferring a decision at this. Time. Deferring the decision. Yeah. I don't think. Okay. Okay. So a second. Okay. Uh, all in favor? Aye. Yes. Opposed. Opposed. Okay. I'm in favor. Motion carried. Okay, thank you for your support. See what we can do. Okay. Keep on trying. Uh, next item was the uh, Parle, the Disaster Mitigation Adaption Fund. Okay, uh, let me find my notes. Okay. Um, I reported uh, briefly on this to the uh, Climate Action Committee um, and understood, again, having come back to the party, what the idea was here. This is a uh, long-range grant. It is a 40% grant, federal only, um, for a fairly wide array of things that you would consider under a disaster umbrella. Uh, the projects must be aimed at reducing the socioeconomic, environmental, and cultural impacts triggered by natural hazards and extreme weather events, taking into consideration current and potential future impacts of climate change in communities and infrastructure at high risk. Um, natural hazards uh, included but are limited to avalanche, landslides, drought, permafrost thaw, earthquake, sea level rise, erosion, storm, extreme temperature, tsunami, flood, wildland fire, hurricanes, and other. Uh, of that list, uh, we probably only don't face risk from permafrost thaw. So, I mean, I think we would probably fit in, in uh, to the umbrella. The deadline is the 26th of July for the application. That's a month away. 19th. Uh, they extended it to, uh, but let me just confirm that because I remember we had that discussion. 23rd. Neither of us had that right. It was 16th before. No, yeah, it's 23rd now. I have my reservations about this, not uh, the least because I am completely out of time to apply for this. Uh, there's nobody else who would have to me. Uh, it's a massive package. Um, the, the, the blank application form is 100 pages. Uh, once it's filled in, I'm sure it will be double that. Um, my main reservation, I, I not want to turn down applying for money. It is only a 40% grant. And I'll just remind council that, that the previous not legislated, but undertaking was that we wouldn't utilize our own money unless a project was 50% grant funded. This would not meet that requirement. We would actually have to find 60% of money from our own coffers to do any one of these things. There's any number of projects we could use it for, for example, drainage, um, so on the sticks most, most importantly in my head because those are the ones that are really uh, overdue. Um, Water supply, uh, for example, exploratory deep, deep wells, Alberta Creek, um, watershed, um, pilot desalination. There's any number of things that we could turn the money to, but we're going to have to find 60% of it. So that's something that council needs to consider. Do we want to even devote the time to going for this or wait for better opportunities? I will say that that less sexy non-green grants are getting thinner and thinner on the ground. I, I suspect they've dried up. So these are gonna be the kinds of grants that we're gonna be seeing in the future. 
Uh, I suspect there will be ones that are more generous that will be somewhat supported by the, the province as well. I mean, you, you know, the infrastructure, the IPC grants that we that we luckily managed to get a piece of, uh, that was 50% federal and 33% provincial, meaning we only had to find 17%. That was that was a good grant and uh, testament to staff at the time. We, we got a $2.71 million project approved for that one. Um, so all I have to say. So can I comment a little bit on a few of the things they said? Um, yeah, get we up against it. How bad we've been trying to do it since, since January and haven't had the staff. And I guess we don't need to explore that too much further. Um, the idea was, Carl, that and why we, we selected drainage is because this is something we need to do. And we've been talking about doing for all the time I was on council and probably all the time you were on council. Um, and... You know, so I'd rather spend six cent dollars than a hundred cent dollars because we have to do it anyway. Um, and we're not making any traction on that. And it's you know, it's costing us money, it's ruining our roads, it's creating problems in people's basements. There's all sorts of reasons why we need to do it, other than the potential for you know a hundred year storm that we, we can cater with. We know it's happened in previous years and there's been rainfall and we washed out streets, too much rainfall. So it's something we have to do. And and it is forgiving. Um, maybe my generous is the wrong word, so I use the word forgiving, in that you don't have to do it in a set time frame, you have to do it for a long time, you can take your time about it. Um, I'm speculating it might have been something if you don't actually get there, might not have to owe too much or commit up to too much because it's, it's very open as to what we're going to do. It doesn't, allow, it doesn't have to be shovel ready, it allows for us to explore this option and design, um, you know, and they allocated us a couple of a million bucks, and we only spent a million, it says it has to be over a million. I'm sure we have no harm done there. So I think it's very, it's very um, you know, flexible. Flexible is a better word. You know, I'm trying not to use the word. So what's the ask? Are you, so the ask. The application? The, 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 well, the ask was could we still make the application? But I guess what I'm hearing, it, we can't do it anyway. Is that what I'm hearing? Is there any opportunity to phone them and maybe a special extension? Or you, is that extension all we're going to get? Is the grants committee or the infrastructure committee going to help us? Because that's something we've struck that. They haven't had their first meeting. The infrastructure committee is meeting next week. Uh, is that something that will help our decision making? About the decision, uh, you know, if there's somebody there who would uh, assist with the grant rising, yes, maybe. Okay. There's a lot of data that has to be gathered. Um, sorry to understand where it is to be found. Um, I guess it's really what I, I need to know is if council tells me to do this, I will do it. Um, in in the sort of the uh, the second set of twenty four hours in a day, um, because there's a lot going on, which council somewhat knows about. For, for example, case in point, uh, the main reason we need to fix our drainage is making our roads move, and our water mains are in our roads, and uh, we have an almost linear increase in leakage year on year. That uh, that is starting to get uh, quite serious. So, what are you looking for? A uh, motion? I, I need you to order me to do this or not. I, and oh. can I just touch on one other thing that you brought up, Paul? Um, you, you, know, you used the words unlegislated agreement um, about not being able to use a borrowing for anything that wasn't 50 50. Mm -hmm. So, that was never a council resolution. It was never a race, no. Okay. So, we could, and we'd be breaking any resolutions if we did. No, no, and council chose to do that last term to fund the PRBs. If exactly. That's our problem. Can we get some help in this uh, in terms of the summer work? We've got some people. Uh, uh, do they have the kind of skills that they could do some grant writing? No. Um, okay. That's the short answer. Okay. Um, Councillor Cunliffe. Is there anyone else that, is there others in terms of, of grant writing? We certainly have grant writing. I think there's some individuals in there that can help and, and we'll find out whether if we could get them connected, if that's the case. I, I'm sure there's some stick handling, you know, the actual meat of the application needs to be done by yeah. me, quite frankly. Yeah. Um, but the rest, I don't want to call it the fluff or the padding, that would be unkind to grant writers, but the, the, the niceties. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, probably, if we had one, some. Do you feel with that type of support, it's realistic that you could get an application together? Yeah, in yeah, I mean, yeah I mean, it's, other things would slide. 
why don't we have a motion to, for you to put the application together and you can pull on the on the infrastructure, the grants committee, uh, working groups come um, next week. What you other know, kind that, of that, things might something. slide? Just bylaw enforcement. Um, How would it impact bylaw enforcement? Is that around bylaw? You just give them direction. I mean, you don't. No, no. This uh, the more egregious, uh, the larger bylaw issues. Uh, two of which you have in your uh, coming in uh, yeah. packages. Um, but let's say that situation most likely isn't going to change within the next month. No, no. It's I, probably I, long, more long. Maybe we can get it to a yeah. Why don't you take? Uh, take give it a try and uh, call on the committees as they get formed. Together here, and um, and see what happens. Well, I think it's worth a try. I'm 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 ready to ask you to go in and find that second set of 24 hours and uh, <laughs> use your discretion. Uh, and uh, and and if if there's further involvement from others that you feel would be appropriate, but I think at this point it should just be asking you to move forward. I think this is really important. Um, uh, it is uh, not as sexy a grant or as big a grant as we want, but we 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 uh, we need to access it. Yeah, I, I would agree. Uh, unfortunately, I have to agree, uh, Councillor Abbott. Do you uh, is, you're really sort of the, the 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 arbiter on this one? You think it's worth it? That's good enough for me. I think we should give it a shot. No, I absolutely think we should give it a shot. Okay. Yeah. Okay, Councillor Abbott or Reuter, make a motion. You're thriving with the busyness. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, I'll, I'll put forward a motion that uh, Council Director uh, Manager uh, Colbier to go forth and apply for the Disaster Mitigation Action Fund grant. I've got that right. Um, or report back to Council uh, why he's unable to do so. Uh, second. <laughs> All in favor? On his knees at the time. The Adaptation, Resilience, and Disaster Very Mitigation good. Program. Yeah. yeah. Wonderful. Okay. okay. Thank you. Uh, recycling Thank you. information. Thank you, Carl. Uh, recycling information for the village update. Uh, Councillor Broughton, I think that was you that added. I was asked about um, the, uh, I wasn't clear about the, there's extra time in the work shard where, where people can bring their, their garbage and, and recycling and so on Saturday mornings, right? Yep. Um, is there not also uh, an additional places that you can bring uh, recycling that aren't, isn't normally picked up? In the village? No. no. no a, we have a plan and proposal, an action item to get that into the next contract. Okay. Um, started on the previous Climate Action Committee. This Climate Action Committee revisited it. We had Waste Collection Service come present to us. Um, there's another option for something. The decision, well... There's no decision because it's a council decision. The, right. the recommendation or where the committee was leading was we're going to look at it in the next contract, which had always been an intention, intention anyway, not that there was ever a resolution. So yeah. closer to the next contract time, maybe we, we want to word what we think that should look like. But currently, there's nothing, and it would only be in the next contract. Yeah. And ballpark numbers, 300 bucks a month. But we could, could even be less than that. Right. Perfect. Okay. Sure. Okay. That's, that's helpful. I I knew there was something else. And we are tying the two to the other two actions that are going on, one about the Saturday morning and then the other one about early Friday morning. Right. This, this, but the, this will be more about the early Saturday morning one, I guess. But right. people could do it in both time slots. Sure. Um, where we actually have someone in the workshop anyway. Right. So it's no additional staff time yeah. other than what we've read previously. So this is like styrofoam and plastics. Yeah, so the, the, list, the list is of the soft plastics. Two different kinds. You need to go to that in another meeting. Yeah, <laughs> it's not. There's not only one soft plastics, even though in that store you need to throw them more in one bin. We have to separate them. Styrofoam, um, and then those are the three light bulbs, batteries. Those are the big ones. Those yeah, you know, right. two different st plastics and styrofoam. And then we went through a, a bit of a shopping list: light bulbs, batteries, pens, um, and and all of that doesn't really add much to it. Perfect. Um, we even That's spoke good. about. Um, Electronics. I get the electronics. So, no. big wooden trunks we need to stay away from. Yeah. yeah. Right. yeah. It's, a, it's a very worthwhile thing yeah. to do, and it's very, very cost effective. So, and, and the other part about it is so we already get $25,000 from recycling to see. $5,000 we have to spend on education. So, there's a perfect place to you spend $5,000. And the waste collection services believe if we can pr improve our stream and do this, they might, they'll even give us a bigger credit and they won't charge us the dumping fees. Right. 
So it's got lots of possibilities. Win, 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 win. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I promise this was a short item, so I appreciate that. Yeah. Sorry for the long answer. No. <laughs> but unfortunately, it was just helpful. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> okay. Um, thank you for that. Uh, next item, uh, the mayor's, uh, we, we struck three items out of the mayor's uh, little list. Um, we'll do fire smart initiatives. Um, I would like to uh, have a motion to bring the fire smart or a fire smart representative to the village. I think the fire is our biggest risk to this village. Um, I would like to at least hear from one of the fire smart and, um, and, and also our fire chief in conjunction with our fire chief. So I'd like to reach out and see if we can't uh, have them come to the village and maybe uh, educate us on some measures that we might be able to take or may be able to take to mit mitigate our risk. So um, that, that was my intention. Okay. Um, so I'll make a motion on that. Uh, second. Second. Okay. Uh, discussion. Sure, I've got a couple of things come to mind. First of all, we have... Um, we have reports that have been prepared on, on the subject matter. Um, the previous reports, the, the last one was 2018, no, it was later than that, 2020, I think it was. Um, and uh, and, the, and these are granted reports that we had to do that included you know, uh, fire risk. Um, $10,000 problems gave us money that forced us to go to a report. But we've had uh, we've had previous presentations on on the idea of fire smart and what that means. Um, we have a resident on the climate action committee that has a passion for this, and he has actually done the courses and got the qualifications. Um, we've discussed it at the EPC. My honest opinion is that's the place we need to discuss it. Um, let I say again, we need an emergency planning coordination meeting, um, and I think that's. Probably the best place to start the discussion. Um, anyway, that, those are those are my thoughts. Okay, uh, I like that. Any information that we can get, um, that's great. That's great. Uh, so the emergency response and Councilor Brown, could we link that back to this this rail the rain barrels and rain storage tanks? I mean, one of the things if 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 we if if we can provide education on that, I think the village is hungry for ideas of what can I do to help. And how can I, um, you know, keep my garden alive and keep, you know, yeah. Uh, again, one one of the one of the uh, issues around uh, fires is is dryness. And if and if people can can use rain barrels to water their gardens during the periods when we when we we're into uh, you know cataclysmic uh, water shortage, uh, I think that's a really good idea. And I think it'd be a the, the, the letter that, that's coming out this year is, seems like a great idea to give us small incentive or just education about rain barrels. I think the rain barrels and the rain stores, that, that either came from Phil Volkerson or, or Carl. I, I don't recall, but I think that's... Well, there's a letter in our, in our packet. Yeah. 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 And there was a discussion in the last CAC meeting about this very topic. Um, we haven't got a report or a recommendation out of that. Um, you go back there and, and, and see if they, the climate action committee wants to put something forward. Perfect. If that's what you want to do. Okay. Yeah. Take it yeah. to the CAC. Yeah. yeah well, they brought it up in the last meeting anyway. Sure. And, well, and look at the community involvement that might you know, be involved in that as well. It's a very easy thing to be involved in and feel good about it and make a difference in the village. Carl, you may know any of those uh, old tanks, can they be used or lined to have water in them to potentially fight fire? Uh, which one? Uh, the, the water tanks? Yeah. Uh, the five that are disused? Yes and no. They can certainly hold water. Uh, it's not portable. Um, the Vancouver Coastal Health will get very exercised if they're even connected. Could be connected, meaning the valving would have to be taken off. The problem is how do you get that water to the fire? It only works if you can lay a line from the fire engine to the tank, which means that you know it needs to be close to where one of the tanks is. So I had a discussion with the fire chief on this one. It's all very well uh, having those, but we can't connect them to the village water supply because it's not potable water. So the short answer, the, the, the restricted answer to the question is no, we can't really use uh, existing tanks, uh, in fact, those have to be demolished at some point 
because they, they can't be connected to the maze. Unless you can get a fire truck to them, and that's what the previous yes. chief was talking about, being able to fill up these trucks there. But they only carry 500 gallons of trucks, so you know, that's 40 seconds of, of water. So that, you know, that's kind of useful, uh, but they, they would rather have the fire people driving the truck at the fire and going to fetch a pool of water. Okay, uh, we're touching on a few different subjects there. Uh, back to the motion uh, uh, to have a fire smart representative uh, maybe address the either the emergency uh, committee or or council. I, I, th I think the emergency committee, in my opinion, is the place the place to do it. Okay. So you get the best feedback and, and discussion. Um, I'm fine with that. That gets it started. Yep. Okay. Awareness. awareness. Great. Right. Perfect. So, uh, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Carried. Okay. Uh, following the guidelines, uh, guidance of the province's best practices, and we discussed that earlier. Um, I'd like to make a motion that that uh, in in you know whenever possible we follow these guidelines because I I, I think that we've got this expertise here and uh, and we're really missing out if we uh, if we don't uh, heed their guidance. So um, second that motion. Okay, uh, discussion. So I think what, what are you recommending that we now give blanket approval to follow every guideline that's given? I mean, they're guidelines, suggestions, they're advisors. And uh, I mean, I think authority rests uh, at the table here. Um, okay, we're going to go around the room. So, Councillor Reuter, you, you've got five minutes. I, and then we'll go to Councillor Conleff. Well, you you brought it forward. Uh, go go ahead and, and and fill us in a little more. I'm a, a little un, unclear first. I, I'm a little unclear as to what you're proposing here. Uh, it, it is a motion to to heed the advice, the best practices, whenever possible, because what I've seen is that we're not following the best practices. So the motion would be to uh, follow the guidance of our provincial advisors when they outline best practices unless there's an extraordinary situation where where we shouldn't. May I make a comment? I'm not sure if we actually need a motion for that. I feel that that falls under our oath of office, that that is what our prerogative here is to do the best we can for our community. And listening to the advice of the experts as it's given to us is, but trying to mandate that into a motion because there's still nuance in the motion when you say as best as we can. I just, I'm not sure if it's necessary that we have a motion behind this. I think an open dialogue about it is probably more effective. Okay, um, uh, my response to that is uh, our advisors have gotten very frustrated that, that we often are not following their guidance. So um, maybe I'll take this moment just to, to turn and ran near Deanna, uh, is there any any motion or any uh, uh, sort of guidance that you can provide so that we can we can sort of heed your advice? Because uh, I know you get frustrated from time to time, and and uh, so perhaps this is an emotion. Please help me out on this. Um, you want to start, Randy? Yeah, uh, Mr. Mayor, I think, first of all, trying to legislate that is, uh, is, is, is difficult. I, I, I know what, uh, I know what, what your intent is and, and, you know, and as the, as your advisor, I kind of like it, but I, I think trying to legislate that's going to be very difficult. I think Councillor Cunliffe, uh, has a good, uh, good handle on, on the overall situation by referring back to, uh, your oath of office and your code of conduct. Uh, I guess what I would like to see uh, you do a little bit more often, and perhaps uh, Deanna and I can take uh, a, maybe a bit of an upper hand to guide you in this direction, and that would be if you don't like the advice we're giving you, uh, or you think it's uh, you think it's not a fit for you, and sometimes it's not, uh, then you would agree that therefore to bring it back to council for further debate with all council members rather than running off and doing your own thing. I think that's the that's the frustrating part that that I experience is that uh, you know we all need to work together as a cohesive group and uh, I think having a dialogue about you know notwithstanding Mr. Deal's advice or or Deanna's advice uh, you know let's talk about that in council before we take action in a different direction so that would make me feel more comfortable and I think it also expands everybody's knowledge at the same time so 
Uh, once again, legislating it, I don't think it's going to work. I think you do have the tools already at your at your hand. We just have to have a, have an agreement amongst ourselves that uh, let's bring it back to council and have a further debate around that. Uh, Diana, anything to add? I, I would I would agree with uh, Randy's comments, and I, I also like Councillor uh, Cunliffe's suggestion um, or comments that um, you know it, it, you know you, you're you're obligated to, to do your best and um, and and follow uh, good practice, and of course our role is to provide you with uh, guidance and advice and and um, share best practices with you, but. Ultimately, um, and I've always said this, it's it's at council's discretion as to whether or not to take that um, take that advice. And certainly, we can't hold you to it. Um, there'll be situations and times where perhaps that doesn't work best um, best for you. And, and as Randy said, it would be good if if you don't agree with it or you don't feel that it works well for you to have that discussion um, as as a whole. Um, as like when you're sitting in a, in a council meeting, but but otherwise, um, yeah, I mean, we we don't take it personally. <laughs> um, we're just sharing our, our advice and our guidance. Um, and we certainly hope that you take it and we hope that it's helpful in, in most cases, but um, it may not always be what's um, what you feel is best in the circumstance. All right. Thank you for that. Okay. So I guess the summary is they can lead us to water, but can't force us to drink. So uh, you're next, Councillor Abbott. All right. So, um, yeah, I think, Deanna, I was going to bring up that you, you, you always caveat this advice with the council has to make the decision that best suits the municipality and what council's goals are. So I'm glad you brought that up because I was going to approach you there. Um, and then I guess, you know, in this case, we will, we will take your advice as given. Um, in my case, um, and I do agree, it's, it's something we can we legislate or enforce because we have to we have to have that like, open discussion about whether the advice works for us in, in all cases. In my in my opinion, Council Ryder. Yeah, I I I, I appreciate the advice. Advice. Uh, I I will always, uh, uh, if I feel necessary, take the liberty of uh, engaging in a little. Back and forth, uh, Randy. You and I have done that, and I've enjoyed it. I hope you have a little. Um, but uh, yeah, I think uh, we have our primary duty to residents, and uh, and uh, uh, and uh, that that's where I am on this. Yeah. Okay. Councilor Brown. Uh, I've appreciated the advice that we've been given, and and I just have tried to do everything I can to make sure that the advisors have as accurate information as possible on which to help us. So uh, I'll you know, continue to do that. Um, I think you need to know what's going on. If we're, if we're, we're depending on, on your advice that, that uh, all material matters to do with the village, you should be aware of. So we'll continue to make sure that you have good information and we'll, we'll work with it as best we can. Okay. Thank you. I think uh, I guess we'll do the best we can, and uh, we'll sign the code of conduct this evening and mm -hmm. get that out of the way and act in the best interest of the villagers. So, okay. Uh, next item, council uh, item C: renewable diesel request for further research. Um, Carl, was that your recommendation or a climate action recommendation? No, Councillor. Okay, Councillor Abbott, would you like to expand on that? Um, so this once again was something that originally came to council on a previous um, and there was some considerable discussion about it. Um, there's two reports in here that uh, I've people taken some time to read, or uh, not all the attachments. Certainly, I've read the two reports. One was from the Climate Action Committee, penned by Claire George, and then the second one was a response from the previous workshop manager, Mike Jaffer. What what it came down to, um, and kind of now just recently tonight, sent me another email on, on something else uh, on this matter. So you know, it is a, is a, is a topic that's been discussed in many jurisdictions. I would suspect. Um, so you know, from from the climate action committee side and from player side, it, it would seem like a, a simple no brainer. Um, you know, we have these commitments. That we were, this committee's Primary focus was initially for the municipality, they're going to morph, they're going to move into other things, but initially the focus was 
get the village to meet its commitments, of course, you know, as to do by the province, um, and you know, find ways for the village to move up as, as the, not, not the villagers, the municipality um, entities to get to get away from um, to reduce their emissions um, and meet those targets. Um, this one action um, would do all of that in the stroke of a pen. Um, and Councillor Cameron made a comment she, she was involved in that committee then. Um, when, it, when it got stuck was, and just so everyone understands, um, so this fuel, the tailpipe's emissions of this fuel is not dramatically different to regular diesel. What it is, is this is a synthetic diesel that's produced in a different way that has you know, very little um, greenhouse gas or carbon emissions at the, at the source, at the production of it, as opposed to, you know, oil sands and refineries. Um, but what it came down to was, did, did it, was it going to affect our warranties on our equipment in general, and it ended up getting stuck around you know, the Ford trucks that we drive? Um, because your warranty is void if you put any fuel in that you know has any kind of contaminants in it. Um, Thayer's argument, and quite rightly so, is well, the contaminants typically are water or, or moisture of some kind, um, or there could be other contaminants. That's going to get in there, depending on how you store and use the fuel that comes out of your tank, not, not from the supplier. There's, there's no, nothing to suggest that R100 is going to be any so, more likely to be supplied as a contaminant than any other diesel. There's nothing to suggest that. However, Ford and you know, the person we spoke to, or that I spoke to, um, got hung up on, first of all, we think he confused this fuel with biodiesel, which is something different. I mean, biodiesel is, yeah, throw some cooking oil in your truck and away you go. Um, so that got a bit, bit confused, um, we believe. And, and secondly, um, he, he just got hung on this not being an approved fuel, I think was what you'll get through this report. Um, and so there are many other jurisdictions that use this. Metro Vancouver years ago only used R100 fuel. It's one, one of their ways of meeting their goals. Um, and yeah, there's, there's numerous other cases mentioned in the report. So what is the ask? The ask is, um, and not as a higher priority so that it bumps the disaster mitigation fund. <laughs> okay. Um, the ask is that the workshop manager go back and distill this down to, I think, those two key components. Reconfirm the math works, and this is only six thousand dollars a year because that's what's quoted in the report. Um, and confirm, you know, with uh, the vendor suppliers if we have got to the point where they now understand and they're accepting R100 fuel. And we know many other suppliers, car manufacturers are, many other jurisdictions are doing this. There's a question of whether our particular dealer is actually going to uh, face up and and not avoid, try to avoid a warranty. So that we need to take care of. And then bring it back to council. Um, and hopefully at that point, council is making a decision based on meeting greenhouse gas emissions or saving $6,000 and having you know, a larger fireworks display. So that, that's where the council's decision should be. But in order to get to that, we need to get clarity on this other stuff that's disputed for lack of ability. Well, I can, I can comment on that now, if you like. Uh, I can certainly put a business case, business model, what do you want to call it, around the use of R100. Um, but I do need to know from council, what is your end goal here? Are you trying to meet greenhouse gas, gas uh, uh, inventory targets? Uh, do you want to be what fuel we are burning, even though it costs $6,000 a year more than the current fuel? Um, is it just more responsible fuel? You can buy quite a lot of carbon credits for $6,000. Um, the, the additional cost is not just $6,000 because we presumably still have to retain diesel for some uses. So we need a third tank. So that, that's the thing you need to call you to come back because that was disputed before. This is considered a drop in fuel. It can go, it goes into your existing tank and it can be mixed with your existing diesel. That's the way it was described. I think for the council to do what you're suggesting, and I mean, maybe that's going to come back to the final action committee first, is we first need to get clarity on those things, which, which isn't really in this report. Yes. Um, the, other, the other thing I, that, I, um, that I just want to mention is 
So the previous council did take steps, did declare a time of emergency, did agree to moving towards these goals and committing to reduce our greenhouse gas. I can that's a given. That's there already. I can do a report. That, that's yes. not the yeah. If that's if that's that's the yes. But that's the yes. So yeah. yeah. Okay. Okay, the motion is uh, the Climate Action Committee recommends to Council that Council direct staff to work with the committee to procure quotes on clean energy alternatives. Now, council directs the Village Workshop Manager to update the current reports um, and, and report back to, back to Council. For, or, at least we'll get back to climate, climate Action first. Update the current reports with the latest information and bring it back to the Climate Action Committee. Okay. Between. All in yeah. favor? Yes. yes. Uh, yeah. Opposed? Carried. Okay. Uh, next item, code of conduct. I understand um, Councillor Ryder still yet to sign and Councillor Conlon. Yeah, I was under the impression we were going to have it here this evening. Mr. Mayor, if we I could. Have um, that that may be on. That may be on um, on on me. So staff looked for direction in terms of what the purpose of having the code of conduct was on the agenda, and I actually wasn't wasn't clear on that either. So I had just said that they should have it on there for information. I didn't realize, or I may have missed that council intended to actually sign it um, at the meeting. So apologies if um, if there was mis miscommunication between myself and staff in getting that on the agenda correctly. Okay. No problem. No worries. I, I can pop into the office or yeah. if you email it to me. I can print it out and send it to you. Yes. Thank you, Marina. I, I, I had assumed that it would be coming at some point, And then I saw a bunch of emails flying in. People were signing theirs and sending it in. And I think... Uh, Just a miscommunication. Yeah, miscommunication. Uh, so, uh, all right. I'll do the same as Jamie. Yep. Good. Yep. Okay. Um, next item was the item D committees, Lions Bay Beach Advisory Committee, and Councillor Brown. Uh, okay. Um, at the last meeting, uh, Councillor Abbott uh, resigned from the committee and uh, very graciously came to the committee the following at, uh, at its next meeting and explained his 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 uh, thoughts and discussions. I think that was very helpful to the, to the committee. Um, and uh, so, and subsequently, uh, Councillor uh, Conliff has, has agreed to join the committee. So it's, we're formalizing her joining of the committee by bringing it to council. Okay, so a motion to appoint Councillor Conliff to the committee, Lions Bay Beach Committee. Is that? Uh, second. Mm -hmm. All in favor? Aye. Yes. Carry it. Okay, thank you. Thank you. thank you. It's a great group. It is. Yeah. Okay, next item was a request for a decision, and that was uh, Councillor Broughton, you had added that? No, and that was ultimately put into uh, you're Correct, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, you had added, next item was parking and highway noise. Yeah, and I think we can probably, but those may, may also need, want to go into closed as well, but uh, just that there, there's ongoing concern with parking and traffic safety as a result of parking issues within the village. And we seem to, and, and we just keep kind of bunting this along week by week or, or meeting by meeting. So I'm hoping to, to look at, at um, getting a parking committee together as soon as possible, looking that there is a terms of reference for the previous parking committee, um, which uh, I, I don't know whether it needs to be adapted or, or updated or whatever, but but uh, I'd be willing to to take that on. Um, come, um, to not the committee they're taking on get uh pushing forward with with setting up of a, of a parking committee and likewise i think we need uh department of of uh, highways is going to be working on uh quiet pavement this summer and there's certainly a lot of concern from residents regarding highway noise so i think we should try to uh look at ways to get the highway noise committee set up. There's individuals who are very anxious to be involved. So I think if we just get everybody in the same place at the same time, it would be really important. But I'll, I'll have a couple of suggestions maybe in close. Okay. Any other comments? Um, 
we were going to revisit all the committees with the addition of Jamie. Um, I think we wanted to do it. Was we going to do the strategy session? Or, I don't know if we, we settled on it. Um, so I think we need to have that, that session. We had, we had a council resolution as who was on which committee. Mm -hmm. um, and then, um, it still stands. Um, yeah. but it, does have, it doesn't have Jamie's name on it. So I think we should go back and revisit that. Um, or we can just give Jamie all the roles that Norm, Norm had. <laughs> <laughs> Harder struck. Um, do you in the headlight? <laughs> yeah. Okay. Do you want to defer that to the next meeting and put uh, some material together? And I think we just okay. need to have that discussion. Yeah. 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 Okay. Well, we have the we have the previous. Um, we previously we did it. You know, if we do uh, that, uh, Jamie, you know, chance to look at the. Yeah. Okay. Previously, it was going to be the whole, and then we approved it. It counts. Yeah. We bring that whole package back. We had a whole list of, of commitments that we took on. So it could bring it back and definitely revisit it in light of you may have different interests. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, but and, I, and I misspoke. I think we did that after Norman resigned. I don't think he's named it anyway. Then I'll take all of the committee's enormous. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, why don't we put that on the next agenda yeah. and uh, we'll give you an opportunity and all the councils a chance to look at this. Okay, uh, emergency services. Uh, hang on one sec. Um, and it, it, I think we we're going to discuss it in a committee of the whole or in a strategy session, were we? I mean, is it really material yeah. for the next agenda? Well, that was the, that was the previous suggestion. Yeah. Uh, um, When's the strategy session? Have we, I, I'm hearing that's, being bunted to the fall. So yeah. when with the parking and highway noise, those are areas that uh, I think residents would really like to see some progress. So it might, and, and maybe, maybe Marcus is going to point because it might take some time yep. um, and we might have a busy agenda. Do we have another committee of the whole meeting? Do we just discuss this? We probably should. Yeah. Our agendas are pretty packed. We're going to have another midnight session. Just set up a committee of the whole meeting in the next week or so. Yep. Maybe a challenge to find a time based on our our other attempts to. How much time do you think? Yeah, can we tuck it in the next meeting? That would be as opposed to uh, adding another meeting. I, I, we, are we all speculating how much is on the next meeting's agenda? We're, I think we all kind of jaded by having midnight meetings. So I just thought this this could be a, a very, this could be a conversation that goes on for a little while. How, how about if we get all of the information forwarded to all of us for review and yeah. then have a discussion by email how much time we actually need the committee of the whole 25 minute or 45 minute phone call, then we might be, it might be more flexible to be able to actually do that midday, even perhaps. Yeah. Well, I, we, I, we I like that move to action on some of these things. So I think if we can pick up with kind of things, even if we say, like, choose these, we need to discuss these committees, these ones can, yeah, so we're, gonna, we're gonna ask staff to go get the previous um, meeting minutes and. And well, distribute it to all of us. I can send it to you. I mean, there was a committee of the whole yeah, in November. I guess any of us could yeah. find it. Yeah. And, and we've all got it. And then I can just send it to you, Jamie. Yeah. You got it? If, I mean, a starting point? A Wednesday at 3 p.m. may work if it's not going to be, okay. you know, two-hour commitment. So. so I'll get that to you, and then we can figure out a time. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Uh, emergency services. Um, was that... Flag for the meeting. Is that what that? I think that's just the police report from last time, isn't it? Um, okay. But definitely we needed BPC. It wasn't any of the police reports. Okay. Okay. All right. Good enough. Uh, resolutions uh, number 11, Canada Day Fireworks, uh, recommended to a motion be it resolved that as authority having jurisdiction and being advised by the fire chief. That it may so do, council will duly override current coastal fire cent center fire ban in respect of the, the public fireworks display at Lions Bay Beach Park on July 1st, Canada Day, on the grounds that the display will be under the control of Lions Bay Fire and Rescue Department, which is capable of handling all ex 
emergencies, including but not limited to having suitable equipment uh, to hand. That's it. Okay. Thanks for that help. That the spectators will be kept safe from a safe distance from the fireworks uh, takeoff and the landing zones by a, a barrier, and that staff will communicate this resolution in the village updates of June 23rd and the 30th to alleviate public misgivings in light of the fire ban. That is a motion. Do we have a, a motion? Point of forward. Second. Okay, discussion. Second. I'm wondering if I could amend it, if I could add a piece to it. Um, I know there was uh, some uh, resident concern about the state of the sand, the beach sand in the area where the fireworks had been shot off in previous times. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, there just must be a real thorough cleaning, especially summertime. I think it might have been from, from Halloween when there was a lot of stuff left over. But um, was, there, was there fireworks at Halloween? I think it was I, there was residual concerns in emails the last year's last year's the first, yeah. So I, I just think it's it's really important to ensure that the, that the the beach sand itself is really cleaned up. It, it, it was it was the launching area for the for the fireworks, and there was residue there, and, and it really needs a good cleaning. So I just so my my addition would be the careful careful thorough site or clean up of the beach, sand, and launch site to occur. By, by staff? For whom? Fire department. Fire department going to clean up? Uh, we'll just go to Carl. Just on this point. Um, I had asked the fire department to undertake to do that. They do not wish to. Mm -hmm. Probably it's for cleaning in the normal cost of business. Okay. So, Man, can I... you, you can put it in. We do it anyway. It's fine okay. to add it, but I would suggest that the rec is fine as it is. Okay. So, so, so last year there were residents, one participant in the committee of the of Canada Day residents, who went out there and actually did the cleanup several days later. I know. We, we will. Things are, we have, we have to do it before the next high tide. So uh, we'll time it accordingly. And if other times required, we'll do that as well. We're aware of it. The, the guys brought it up to me. So oh, good. Okay. 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 So it's on the radar. Oh, it's, That's all I need to hear. It's on the list. It's on the radar. It's on the list. Okay. I, I withdraw that. Uh, all right. Any other comments? Then? I, I would just recommend formalizing the control of the event to the fire chief in a letter from you after we make the resolution. I'm fine with that. Are we speaking to this here? Yeah. I think so. Yeah. Okay. Go ahead now. Me? Yeah. Um, I'm, I, I'm first of all very concerned about the messaging right now it doesn't seem like a big deal but I'm speculating that July 1st we're going to be definitely in a deep fire ban um, it's going to be could well be in really really dry conditions um, and you know, I, I don't know whether the fire chief has the jurisdiction to do this I'm not going to dispute that he has he says he has so it's assumed that he has um, but is it really the message we want to send when you know other municipalities are? And I, I hate to be the Grinch that kills fireworks. I mean, everyone likes a good party, right? But um, do we really need to do this? Um, is it is it the right message to be sending when we're telling everyone else to be super careful um, to be laying off fireworks? I I, I think it's, I, I honestly feel this, it could be a really bad message. And I think there will there are and will be residents that agree with me on that. If I could interject, uh, we're very conscious of exactly that, uh, hence the reason for the res. Um, we're requesting a res so that council undertakes exactly what staff are asking you to undertake. I, I think the messaging is that we're aware of it. Um, we will be prepared and, and, and ready for it. Uh, the safety aspects are sort of secondary. You know, we expect people to be uh, in a safe place. I have heard reports of kids getting hit by burning brands from the sky. Um, but we have checked, uh, Marina, correct me if I'm wrong, we've checked with neighboring communities. Very few are going to suspend or cancel their fireworks 
because they are the authorities having jurisdiction and, and their fire chiefs say they can handle it. Carl, thank you. Because the fire ban is, there is a ban in place. Yes, yes. We, can, we can override it if, because we are the HJ. Okay, but yeah, all right. So just just make sure what we're we saying here. There is a ban put out by high level government. We believe we have jurisdiction. We can override it. We've checked. Yes. Well, we've checked to the extent the the bar chief says said. I mean, and he would know. Um, uh, fireworks are part of a, a type one campfire. They are very explicitly in the ban. Yeah. Uh, there's there's no wiggle room there. Okay. The question reads, Councillor already is. Exactly as you said, Councillor Robert, do you want to ban the fireworks show? So it says that Coquitlam is having fireworks, Burnaby, Port Coquitlam, and Surrey are all going ahead with fireworks this year for Canada Day. Okay. There's also a list of municipalities that have actually decided not to do it. I'm just looking yeah. at the ones that were going yeah. ahead. And I don't know how many have said no and how many have said yes, but that's, I don't think that's relevant. Um, we've got a decision to make here. Can, can I jump in on that? The word will should be changed to may in, in case the chief isn't comfortable. Pivot. Because it's really going to work right on his yeah. decision making and, and how the way to say it right now is a different signal point than perhaps on July 1st. Mm -hmm. Which will you talking about? Council will Julie override? May Julie override? Is that what you're saying? That doesn't make sense. Which will you change uh, into May? Is it civil rules in here? Neither of them will work as May. Yeah, I was thinking of the fire chief. Would we leave it to his decision making? Yeah. He's already he, he made his decision. May. Well, it says that having, I thought you have to and being advised by the fire chief that it may do so. Council will, will override. So we we making the decision. Can I, can I speak to this? I think that we should leave that. Well, okay, go ahead. But the resolution is written that he's telling us to make this. Council must make this in the authority. Yeah. So, I mean, we're sitting here in a nice, moist, cool day. It's been that way for a couple of, for a while. But, I mean, if that's going to change. Catch my mind back in a week. Yep. Um, we are in the, arguably, the worst fire season nationally that we've ever been in. Um, uh, I... Jamie, there are a number of municipalities that are moving forward. Others are not. Uh, Vancouver, for example, um, and other cities across the country. I, I'm also concerned that this um, this just kind of sends the wrong message that we're not uh, that we're we're not serious about uh, being careful about fire um, and and the dangers of that. We've had a lot of residents write in about concerns uh, that uh, come from the. Uh, Hikers in in the watershed. I think we want to be careful, and and um, and uh, I I would rather join in with uh, the city of Vancouver and say that just out of an abundance of caution that we will uh, uh, that we will have a Canada Day without fireworks this year. Also save us a little money on the cleanup. Sounds like uh, so that would be uh, uh, my take. Okay, Councillor Brown. Um, I, I'm concerned about about potential fire risk. However, there's there's we're going to have the entire fire department on site, um, so I feel a lot better about that. I think that there's a huge need to bring the community together to have have a celebration, and I think that in balance. It's it's important to uh, really have have a significant Canada Day, and uh, anything that that adds to that, I think is 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 positive. So I I support uh, going with this, but but uh, not but if if the if there are last minute concerns, there's no reason to not cancel it. It's particularly dry, particularly windy, particularly you know. Mm -hmm. Any any issues? Uh, safety and safety first. Sounds like come on. I'm sort of comfortable with the same thing. I mean, we could get a hot spot for the next four days, and then it could be the first Canada Day I spent here was about the same kind of weather as it was today. So the weather is really unpredictable. Um, the fire department is there. 
I don't know, I, with the caveat that they could be canceled at any time. Just because we go ahead with it doesn't mean we have to. So I think it's been handled well by the fire department in the past and I don't see any reason to not move forward with the usual protocol with the option of pivoting if that is the comfort of council and the fire chief. And we could easily have a special meeting if we somebody felt particularly um, passionate about not going ahead. Okay, Councilor Roder. Yeah, I mean, just to be clear, we're being asked to uh, override the Vancouver Coastal Fire Ban. Um, I mean, I, I don't think we're gonna meet at short order to uh, rejigger that if we move forward now. Um, I think it's, I mean, most of the events that will take place that day will take place. Um, uh, possibly with the exception of the fireworks, um, still be a wonderful event, uh, community coming together. Um, uh, I just think it's very poor optics for us to uh, override the uh, fire ban at this time. Okay, Councillor Abbott. Yeah, um, yeah, the risk of saying the same thing over. Um, I think that, that is the point for me. I mean, um, so I just, yeah, leave it as I said before, I don't agree with anything else to add. Okay. So we restating it. Call the question. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Opposed. Opposed. Okay, motion carried. Parking, the parking. Uh... Right, allowance, I'll move uh, the next recommendation. Parking regulations be suspended. Uh, okay. It's for angle parking and so on, I presume. Uh, it is. Yeah. For Canada Day. Okay. Motion. Second. Second that. Cars can get in front of the mayor's okay. house. All in favor? Just one, one. Can I just make a suggestion here? Um, it seems to be a, a blanket uh, exemption. I mean, shouldn't we just be limiting this to the area uh, that's in the vicinity of the event? That's what it says. I, I had a different suggestion, um, mm. and mine was, I mean, I, I put this out to say that parking regulations, that regulations that apply, it seems to me a little odd, because then what if there is something you need to um, enforce or some sort of behavior you need to correct, or for some reason there's too many cars that park from any one place. Um, so I was thinking uh, the change the recommendation to read that um, Live Bible have discretion um, to not enforce parking regulations. But they're the only people who are going to do it anyway. Um, so if there's a circumstance where you end up with you know, 10 cars trying to park around the entrance of Beach Park or whatever it is, creating a safety issue, they can still do their job. Mm -hmm. And I'd like to see vicinity defined. That was my point. Carl, happy line. You're ahead of bylaws with any. What I suggest is, I, I, had, I, I saw the res, but I didn't read it in detail because it was too long. Uh, what's been done before is that we've changed the parallel parking to diagonal, and we've suspended the permit parking requirement. So anybody can park along lines we have. Um, pay parking has remained paid parking in the lot. We could, we could suspend that as well. That's a signage issue uh, because people wouldn't know one way or the other. Um, I don't... I don't think we should be changing the parking brakes anywhere else. Um, so just on the um, on the parallel parking versus diagonal parking. So on the last the last year, we tried to do that, and we were told we couldn't. Even though we'd done it many times in the past, I mean, as, as you call, we were told we couldn't do it. Um, I mean, lost to remember whether it was the fire chief. Well, the workshop manager that told us we, we shouldn't or couldn't, or maybe it was even the CIO. I think it was the CIO. Well, what was the reason? <laughs> was it a good one? I I don't think it was. Anyway, so just, just check back that there wasn't a good reason for us not doing it last year, even though we've done it many years before. I'll do that. Um, just, just as a... You know. What it means is you have to walk further because, you know, you can park all the way to my, the end of my forever if you have to. Well, I was concerned about the width. And the restriction on the street if you do the, the diagonal problem, but makes it tougher to for two way traffic, but it, but it, it works. It, it's one nice, and yeah. I think you define the vicinity in my mind 
strictly to Lions Bay Ave and keep the pay parking in place because we're going to have people enjoying the park from outside of the village all yeah, day. It's, it's not going to leave when they see a party going on, so it, it may as well leave the and it'll make life a lot simpler for having to re-sign the parking lot. Yeah. And and lines may have below the tracks or lines may have below the tracks. Yes. Okay, so we should be fine. Yeah. And and with discretionary authority given still retained by bylaw. Well, there'll be no discretion required. The, the rules will be very explicit. Well, you still can't park, park in the firefighters. Oh, so that be a regular yeah. Safety, yeah. yeah. And what if you've got a bunch of uh, angled parking and it's protruding in the roadway from? It will. We allow parking in the roadway. So mm -hmm. that's, uh, again, yeah, we maybe we'll have the people, the bylaw guys will be advising, probably need to pull in a little bit further. Mm -hmm. but you, obviously, people have to start out at the right angle. Yeah, okay, you just need a few strategically parked cars <laughs> for people to fall in line. I mean, even for line, it's, too much. it's got to be more like this. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. So move to get the second. members of the events committee to show up early for set up yeah. and set up for the tarp. Okay. Mm -hmm. okay. All right. <laughs> All in favor? Great there. Opposed? With the amendments? Yeah. Yeah. With the amendments. Yes. Okay. Very good. Okay. Uh, item number 12, bylaws. Um, nothing there. Uh, correspondence, uh, Councillor Roger. Yep. Um, let me just scroll down to that. So, of course, Tom, I'll try to be quick, but without being cursory. I'm behind on my responses due to my absence. Um, yeah, we've got a uh, number of, uh, I'd suggest we receive the uh, general correspondence. Um, and then as to resident correspondence, uh, R1, uh, that's an interesting one. Um, it's about the uh, spraying of Roundup. Um, I mean, this is, of course, something that's come up before. It's a matter of legitimate concern uh, to, uh, to the community. Um, I've spoken with uh, a local resident, Penny Nelson, who sits uh, actually on the board of the Sea to Sky Invasive Species Council, the SSISC. And um, as I understand it, they use, uh, are extraordinarily cautious uh, in their work um, and that the use of herbicides is performed very judiciously and cautiously. Um, and it's in cases where manual removal just doesn't work, and it's actually done by a uh, manner of uh, stem injection. Uh, it's a very targeted and focused and controlled uh, protocol, uh, so it's not broadcast spraying, and it's never done near uh, waterways. Um, and as I understand it, uh, the SSISC is planning to attend as a delegation at council, possibly in the summer or July, where we can all ask a few more questions. Um, so that would be my analysis of, of that. Uh, do we have a bylaw or anything in place that bans Roundup? Yes, we do. Yes, we do. Okay. Yeah. I think this uh, the, this letter comes from speaking with the resident. Um, we're walking their dog, and their dog got into some of the vegetation and uh, was throwing up blood after that. So that was a... I think what initiated that letter. So yeah, just uh, I don't know what we can do about we could uh, probably do some some PR on on what our insecticide, herbicide, and rodenticide rules are. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's one of the roundup. It's it's even some of the lesser ones. He made a good. You know, once in a while you go down and you see lawn signs and little signs that the weed man's been there or whoever, and maybe things like that that are. We encountered that with the Warning. rat traps mm -hmm. fish that we were using that we yep. had to stop because then the birds were eating the, yep. eating the rats. You know? yeah. yeah. Hence our participation with this group who use do this in a very controlled, uh, professional way. Yeah. Um, Just, so the, the one the one culprit here that we still have an issue with is seeing rail. Sure. No, they, they're the ones, they don't give you that with injections and syringes and treatments. No, they're just hoping they don't through the village. Yeah. Um, and that's where the big risk is there. We've tried that once before, but 
further earlier comment there yeah. no one to themselves mm -hmm. well yeah but still well, we still put them on notice we don't like them but we don't like that practice don't like them <laughs> Um, R2 and R3 uh, speak to the watershed and trail access, uh, the fire hazards. Um, again, uh, things that we've heard from residents about a number of times, uh, well-documented risks of carelessness up in our watershed um, and the forests above us. Um, you know, um, something that I really think we need to get on uh, before we have a cataclysmic event event that uh, puts into pretty stark perspective all the uh, other uh, conversations that we have at this table. Uh, it'll basically bring us down to reality. Um, I mean, when the fire comes, I mean, we'll certainly fight it, but it will at some point have its way. And uh, one of the questions posed here is about the evacuation plan. And now that's something that's long overdue, as I recall. And uh, I think that we've got to take this to the EPC committee um, uh, as soon as possible and uh, push for this evacuation plan to finally get done. That has to be done. I, I completely agree. Yeah. Um, so then we've got R5 and 7. Uh, they're uh, pieces of correspondence uh, as to best practices uh, and transparency. Um, uh, question why the CAO position is no longer posted. Um, I guess we'll cover that in closed uh, as to whether that will remain unposted or may reopen. Um, and uh, questions about uh, correspondence and censorship and committee terms of reference. Um, I'll try to answer those as best as I can. Um, unless anybody's got any input at this time. I did respond to um with rogers just last week so okay. i was tardy in my response but i did not as tardy as i am on the previous package yeah okay <laughs> hey, uh, i responded to um ms rogers on monday or tuesday i think tuesday of last week and sent a very respectful response and um uh tried to answer her question her questions she may not have got the answers that she wanted to hear, but I did respectfully respond to her questions. Um, I was a bit surprised when I actually had just just sent it off, and I and I was informed of graffiti on on the home that she and Douglas Miller share, and I was just quite quite surprised that it's ironic that it was on the same day. Anyway, I understand that the graffiti has been removed, and. Uh, uh, I don't know whether that was a res result of um, uh, bylaw enforcement of, of the good neighbor policy or whether it was uh, social pressure to remove it, but like I, I, it I, was removed. I don't know what we're getting into here. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Be better for uh, all right. Okay. Yeah. Anyway, yeah. okay. Get back to the letter. So I have I have responded in in each of the each of these points yeah and we we saw your response yeah Can you have my response and i guess i'm a bit, bit concerned about being quoted in her letter in in you know sort of a shortened form so anyway um i'm wondering if my response when we respond when we publish the responses that uh, my response would also be published in the next minutes so just can i just back up on that request so sure. first of all at what point did we decide we were all going to respond separate to this email? Did council decide to do that? We did. So that's what we did at the last meeting, yeah. She had brought these questions to the public participation verbally on probably three different occasions and had not received a formal response. So I suggested that we just all respond individually as to such a time that we come up with an actual protocol of how we're going to respond to public participation either. Right directly at the time if it's a short answer how if we need time to go away and think about it to res re respond thoughtfully then what's the time frame so there's more to kind of discuss on how we're gonna but we did make a statement during the last yeah and and i think if we we're opening up a can of worms if we're now uh saying that each member council member's response to any resident now gets published as response to correspondence. See, this could be a little awkward. I mean, yeah. I, I haven't given uh, 
given given a response, but I guess I, I'm out, I won. This um, one but, was directed uh, to each one of us yeah, individually, right. not so, council on yeah. So yeah. I, 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 I will fall some one. Um, but then if we yeah, publish all four or five of those, um, <laughs> what are they going to look like? Are we going to just got an email debate between us? I mean, I'm sure we're not all going to give exactly the same answers. Yeah, no. I'm right. not so, sure that we, maybe that's a question for Deanna or Randy when it comes to response to residents, when it comes to email or public participation that we're going away and responding. Are, should we be posting it in the agenda or is the, what's your guidance there? We I'll, I'll just, just if, one, two, if any one person responds. Yeah. So, but do we then? I I, I understand yeah. that. Do we then publish the response to the correspondence? Yes, we traditionally have, and we've discussed this. I think before is that that that's the tradition, and that okay. I I think the the little wrinkle we have here in Lions Bay is that it's done on a rotational basis. And that then those uh, responses are published in the next agenda. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, Understood. R four was an interesting one. It spoke to the unfairness that some people uh, experience at uh, paying a, uh, a full water user rate, even if there are very few residents on the premises. Um, uh, not sure how to answer that. Um, Possibly, uh, we've talked about this before here, that uh, water meters would uh, certainly address this. Um, uh, there's a cost uh, involved in that, but uh, perhaps a pilot program could be considered. I, I'm, I'm not sure what council feels on this, um, but uh, I've run into many residents who, who feel the same way, that uh, you know they're, they're paying the same price as their neighbors are who have a lot more people on board. So probably something we'll revisit again at some point. Maybe that's a question for... So, well, yeah, before, I, sorry, I'll just call on just before you, before you go. Um, so once again, another one thing that's come up at the Climate Action Committee, obviously for obvious reasons, right? Uh, yeah, your water, water resources and um, uh, water conservation is being done, it's been raised there. Um, uh, and previously, I think it might even have been on the previous term to the one I was on. Um, the uh, the infrastructure committee looked at it and decided it was cost prohibitive. Um, my personal opinion: uh, at some day, at some time, we are going to be legislated to do this, and it's going to be paid per use, and it's going to make a significant impact on how much water we use. It's the only thing that actually works. It's been proven all over, all over the world, for that matter. Um, but anyway, so I just want those two things in context, and then. Nicole, well, that, that's exactly right. Um, water metering, uh, on average, reduces consumption by 60%. That's in communities with a normal amount of leakage. Uh, we don't know what our leakage rate is. Uh, we, we are programming, uh, as we speak, uh, a routine on our uh, newly metered major infrastructure to try, try and come up with a leakage rate. Leakage doesn't really work in the summer because there's a lot of overnight usage. There's irrigation, there's people staying up later, getting up earlier. But we'll come up with some sort of number. Why? Because the leakage rate is, is I hope we have a lot of leaks because uh, consumption at, at this stage is higher than we will be able to support with creek flow come before. Uh, we, for example, uh, found one on Upper Bayview uh, a week, week ago now. It was 48,000 gallons a day. Uh, that's, that's like six percent of our daily consumption. And, and when we switched it off, it was quite significant. We could see it on all the graphs. I hope we find quite a few more of those. I would love to have metering, not only because of the reduction in consumption, but to find inexplicable usages in many places. It will help us put together a picture of where our main leaks are. Unfortunately, the way that uh, Lions Bay was built back in the day, the, the curb stops, the, the, the water valves between the main and the, and the private service, are deep, in many cases because the hills slipping down over the top of them. Uh, the sleeves, in some cases, broken. Thirty, we don't know where they are. Um, when you do put metering into that kind of service, you have to dig down uh, such that you can get something in the hole. They build a U up to the top where the new meter goes, and then um, backfill. It's it's a major deal. I still think I agree that we're maybe legislated to do it. It's something that we're going to have to face eventually. 
Um, what I, in fact, have drafted uh, is a report or recommendation that we institute a voluntary metering program where people get a small rebate for, for having put paid for a meter, somewhat neutral on the cost. Um, I, I want to put meters into our big users, school, Mabina, store, as we think of big meters, start actually getting handled on this and then prorating the bill according to the overall usage for that fleet. The problem with the request is that in such a small community with only 582 service connections, the fixed component is so high compared to the variable component that with metering, we wouldn't really see much difference in, in charge because we have to cover, unless you want to do even the fixed cost proportional to the water usage, um, you, have to, you have to charge more. But it'd be fair to say that our water consumption is, is as high as it is. I recall the numbers from last year, and it, it's got to be leaks. I mean, are we that greedy? I mean, our our our, our consumption was uh, over double of what bank, uh, the GBRD was, and two and a half times what an average city in North America was. We're significantly over the regional average. Mm -hmm. um, I, I I don't believe we certainly have an added population, so it's not that. I don't believe that people are more wasteful these days than in days of old. Mm. Although I will say there was virtually no discernible response when we went from level two to level three uh, the last time. Uh, that's concerning. Um, perhaps people don't know what that means. There's this significant PR campaign required around that. But I'm hoping we have leads. Perhaps your stronger language in the village update will encourage that. To the extent that people see that, <laughs> sure. Um, yeah. We're working on that, and as I say, in, in the last two weeks, we found two extremely significant issues. Uh, the one in Upper Bayview broke the record, so, so we were very pleased about that. We framed a piece of broken fight. Um, this will be another discussion, but when you suggest voluntary water metering, you then suggest that those that volunteer and sign up get to pay for use, and everyone else pays for the, the difference. So over time, the, People are going to say, "Well, if I don't get on board with this, I'm, I'm paying for you know, I'm paying. You know, the people that aren't are paying for all the leaks, right? Yeah, I can I can use less water than other people, therefore I'll get a better deal. So yeah, yeah. That, that's the idea. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. I'll, I'll sign up. Council right now. Yep. Um, uh, we've got the uh, our check. It's nine fifty now. I'll have to extend the meeting another ten minutes. We don't need to do that just yet, do we? Keep them going, man. And ten minutes. Yep. Um, we've got R eight, which is uh, on the building permits that was discussed before. So uh, I'll respond to that as best as I can. Um, R nine uh, is on the uh, rainwater barrels, something that was uh, uh, just uh, brought up previously. Um, and there's a suggestion that there might be some sort of subsidy or, or a grant or, or a subsidy from the village available. I mean, I don't think we've uh, budgeted that for that this year. Maybe there might be some grants that are available in the future. Um, I think it's also worth mentioning that um, it's one thing to have water barrels, but um, it, we should also be encouraging people to uh, use plantings that uh, mitigate water consumption in the first place. And the uh, native plant team certainly has a, a lot of good resources uh, on that front. So that covers the resident correspondence. Anyone has any further suggestions? Uh, I'll answer it as best as I can here. Oh. Okay, uh, next item is new business. I don't have anything under that. Uh, and we'll move to public questions. So anyone in the gallery? No. Okay, uh, anyone online? Uh, tomorrow, you'll unmute. Hi. Um, I have a question regarding item number 6A, the delegation that came before you on June the 6th from Broughton and Broughton doing business as the Lions Bay Store Cafe. I noticed in the meeting minutes um, that this that the request for the three year plus noise bylaw relaxation for the remainder of this council's term was carried, even though I did not see it discussed or voted on in council. I just want to confirm a couple of things. Um, I, the first, my first question is, 
did Councillor Broughton recuse himself due to a conflict of interest because his name is in the title of the company, uh, Broughton and Broughton. Um, and again, I noticed that the motion was marked as carried, but I did not see it as a vote. My concern um, is that the Lions Bay uh, store and cafe is a licensed liquor and food and beverage establishment. It sells liquor as a liquor store and it also sells food and beverage. And by giving this company um, a, a free noise bylaw relaxation, not a permit, you're not permitting them, you're relaxing a bylaw for them, you're giving them an unfair advantage to a number of organizations and uh, community volunteers. Um, like myself who runs Lions Bay House Concerts, we pay $110. That's what you charge us uh, to rent the hall to, to run a community concert, a concert for the community, and we bring in international traveling talent, um, and we charge ticket sales to be able to pay the musicians and rent the equipment. I don't make money and I don't sell liquor, and I certainly, it's a potluck event. I don't make food and beverage sales. So. My, que my question and my concern is that there's many other people who pay these rental fees. There's a yoga group that pays a rental fee to do yoga uh, for the betterment of the community as a whole out of the village hall. You also charge, um, you know, a, mo a mom and child um, music group to come in and run music classes out of the village hall. These are public space activations that are for the betterment of the community, and there's no we're not a going concern in the sense that we're selling a, um, a licensed, um, a controlled substance in the community. So, um, and I just feel like it's an unfair advantage. So it's not like you've granted a permit, like for the film community that comes in and they have to purchase a permit in order to run their event. And then there's some sort of financial benefit to the community to providing this service, but you're allowing a noise bylaw relaxation that is, you know, I love music and I love gathering, but he's making money selling food and beverage. This is not just doing this from the bottom of his heart. People are there to drive the core business, which is a food and beverage restaurant and liquor sales um, establishment. Um, and I just, I just think it needs to be discussed and reflected upon and a fair a fair lens filter needs to be applied to everyone in the community who organizes things for the betterment of the community and there's a certainly a difference between a public space activation like doing something in the village hall as opposed to granting a noise or in somebody's private home versus a three-year noise bylaw relaxation to a to a licensed commercial establishment. So, okay, so if you can wrap up, please. Thank you. Okay, so could, my, could question, my first question is just has council voted on this? Because I thought you hadn't, but I noticed no. in your meeting minutes that it says carried. So is that true or false? And then the other thing is it's the company name is Broughton and Broughton. So I would expect that Michael Broughton would recuse himself because his name is in the in the corporation. So okay. thank, you. thank you tomorrow. Thank you. Could I answer the first question? No, uh, I, I'm not sure where the word carried has come from on, in those minutes. That motion was not carried. Um, and so uh, that's that's not there. I explained earlier in the meeting, and the, I think people were probably confused why I might have done that, but uh, this is the reason. Um, the Broughton & Broughton Incorporated was, is an incorporated company that was sold in 2016, and Brenda Broughton and Michael Broughton no longer have any interest in Broughton and Broughton Incorporated. Uh, the company is now owned by uh, uh, private other private individuals, and uh, so no, I will not be recusing myself. I have no involvement whatsoever in the company. All right. So okay. it's page, it's page it's on page 16 of 97 of this package. They say carry. How did we miss that? Uh, just to be page, clear, though. Page 16 of 97 of this council package. Is it, yeah. it, says it says carried. It says carried. It says carried. Absolutely. 
Oh, no. Okay. I think if I think if we read that, it says that it will be that the item will be discussed under 14A. No, there's a delegation. It moves seconded that exemption request by Craig Doherty, Lions Bay General Store and Cafe, be added to item 14A. Carried. Yeah. So tomorrow, the, what was moved was that we. What was carried is that we would move it to uh, another place in the agenda, but you okay. should not read the carried as that we okay. approve the, the ask. So my request is not that you deny Craig. Let's just be straight. My request yeah. is if you're going to give it to Craig, give it to everybody else and also mm -hmm. give us a cost break to not have to pay to rent the hall to do something nice for the community. That's so give you. us the hall for free if you're going to give Craig a noise bylaw relaxation uh, essentially a free permit right. for three and a half years, then my goodness, give community volunteers the hall for free. And then we pay $35 right. on top nice. of that for insurance. So thank you. Thank you for those comments and questions. Uh, Casey Dyer. We need to move to extend the meeting. Uh, yeah, a motion to extend the meeting. Yes. Second. Yes. Second. Yes. Fine. Carried. 1030. Hi. Okay. Uh, next. Yes, Casey Dar. Can, can you guys hear me? Yes. yes. Okay. Uh, just a quick point, and that is that I can barely hear you. The sound quality is so so terrible online, and uh, and we can't hear Carl when he stays in his seat in the gallery, uh, and and people's voices are echoing in and out. Uh, I just hope that you might consider, or uh, Carl as the head of works, that you might consider finding some improved um, microphones for your Zoom meetings. And that's, it's just a comment from a poor deafened gallery member. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks, if I could just, uh, uh, through the chair. They can't, uh, they can't hear you. Can we get sort of poll from the other people? Because I'm very aware of the issue and, and I thought we had addressed it. We have two brand new mics. Um, so I'm disappointed to hear that people can't hear. Uh, it would be very useful if, if we could somehow, Marina, is there a way, like a poll online? I don't know. Uh, Randy, Deanna, how is the audio been for you? I can hear you guys fine. Yeah, mine's very clear. What about Carl uh, at the end there, and Del and and uh, gallery members? I can hear Carl and and the gallery members. Good. All right, Casey, it may be your. I, I don't discount what she's saying because I I've had the same problem. What's yeah. From okay. Me? So yeah. Okay. Any other questions? No. Okay. Uh, motion to uh, maybe we could ask the gallery if there is any audio issues. If you wouldn't mind sending an email to council or to yeah to council just to so we can kind of gauge how deep the issue goes. If you are so inclined, thank you. That'd be great. Okay. okay. Thank you. Orders of the day. All right. A motion to adjourn the meeting. Uh, second. All in favor? Yes. Thank you. We'll move into closed. Thank you very much.